Welcome to the first episode of Medium Damage, a podcast where we talk about, you know, things. I'm Freezax, and joining me today is my co-host, Shinto Genesis. What's going on? You know, just sitting here doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, just, just talking. Alright, so, I've wanted to do a podcast for a while, um, as some people may know, as most people probably don't know. Uh, and, well, a couple months ago, my buddy Shinto over here... He's not, well, he's like, you're really far. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were doing a podcast, and I was a part of one episode, and I really liked it, and I kept hounding you on it. I'm like, you gotta keep doing it, you gotta keep doing it. <laughs> and eventually, uh, you called it off, basically, right? Well, it kind of just fell through, because I, uh, I ended up losing a lot of audio from one of the podcasts, and I just got so frustrated that I was like, fuck it, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Yeah, so do you want to kind of before I before we go into like the history of this podcast, do you want to like talk about what that podcast was and like I understand it was a hassle just like watching you get everything organized for that was a <laughs> fucking hassle. Well, it's because the concept was a little bit too broad. The idea was called pod tubing and it was about uh YouTubers basically talking about different things and then kind of promoting them, especially smaller channels and just kind of trying to bring the YouTube community together closer and just we had a room, a Skype room of, like, what, 50 people or something, and... Yeah, it got it got intense, and whenever you were like, who wants to do an episode? It was like, everyone at once would be like, I want to do an episode, you're yeah. like, I only need four people. <laughs> and then only two would show up at the designated time, and it's like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, like, it was... Yeah. It was it was fun to watch, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah, it was fun to be a part of, it was fun to edit, uh, it was fun, like, the whole like act of creating it was fun but getting people together and the precursor to it uh, basically pre-production essentially was just it was a bitch because again everybody's time schedules conflicted people couldn't make it when they say uh, said they could it was it was frustrating but yeah at the same time it was a definitely a fun experience and i mean i thought about bringing it back time and time again but my schedule just never allowed for it i couldn't edit it i couldn't do this i couldn't do that and so this kind of came from that right yeah, this uh, from my from my understanding, uh, <laughs> the this podcast was because, uh, like I said, I kept hounding you, and I was like, "Man, when, when are you do the next episode?" Because I wanted to be a part of it so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a, I have a big fondness for radio. When I was in high school, I took a bunch of radio classes, and like it, it was a big part of my life throughout high school. Mm-hmm. And I've always loved podcasts in a little way. And you, for YouTube, a lot of the times, I mean, I think this is a regular thing. I just use YouTube to listen to it. I love listening yeah, to things. Me too. I I listen to the radio a lot, and it's it's a big thing of and part of my life. So I always wanted to like you know do a podcast, and then I was really excited whenever I got invited to join the one with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then whenever sadly it just wasn't working out, I was like, you know what? Do you want to make a podcast together? And that's yeah. where medium damages come from. Exactly. I mean. Uh, Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. So, right. Oh, this is going to happen a lot. Just a warning. A lot of yeah. we're, we're going to be a lot of. Oh, you go ahead because we're so polite to each other. Which exactly. I, I can't wait to see how it all evolves. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. When we're like comfortable enough around each other, we're like, shut up. I'm talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I uh, I wanted to make a podcast because even though you know my channel is about video games, I have a big love for like movies and all kinds of other shit, and I want to talk about those, but. A good friend of mine made a good point that you wouldn't want to divide all your shit up and right. I want to talk about all this, but I don't want to make I don't want to go too deep into making that kind of stuff. So I want to save all the hard editing for video games and for like movies, television, YouTube, Same. you know, just everything else talk yeah. about it on the podcast. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. I got, you know, I'm kind of pigeonholed as the anime guy because my channel's primarily about anime. Then I started doing gaming stuff and I noticed people weren't very responsive to it because it's not what they came to my channel for. So yeah. I felt the same thing with my pod tubing uh, content. I was like, you know what? This isn't what people came here for. I need to put more emphasis on my anime stuff. So yeah, that's Which, kind of another reason. By the way, if you're watching this on FreeZax... Uh, Shinto Genesis is an anime reviewer. Uh, and I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to brown nose yet all. But Shinto, <laughs> you are a, one of the best anime reviewers I've ever seen. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I, and, and as much as I hate getting this comment myself, but Shinto is one of the th- YouTubers that deserves more subs. Like, and absolutely more. 
legitimately same thing like you know i'm a really honest guy i don't like if i think someone's content's not good i'm not gonna be like oh it's not good i'm gonna be like here's how you can make it better and i honestly can't say that about your content because you in my opinion are very much in line with like the next pro jared completionist john tron like that level of work like clearly goes into your stuff you're very analytical and when you like say this game is better than this game especially in your versus stuff Mm -hmm. generally speaking i mean you're right and you back it up and i just think that plus your editing plus your personality it's just it all works fantastically and again same with you you deserve way more subscribers this was just a compliment 69 right there yeah exactly guys (laughs) exactly Mm -hmm. all right (laughs) yeah so this this podcast is being born pretty Pretty much from the ashes of pod tubing and it's going to be sort of a catalyst of sorts mm-hmm. for uh me and you to talk about different things rather than games and anime Correct. we'll probably end up talking about video games and anime mm-hmm. but well i mean yeah definitely partially i mean but oh yeah we, yeah we also want to go into movies television shows just you know basically geek central yeah, especially because I, one of the coolest things uh, about being like a geek or being a nerd is the the conversation. Yeah, and, and me and you, I mean, the, well, the other night we had like a thirty minute conversation about like reaction videos on oh, YouTube. We and have I was to like, do that. I was like, hey, look at that. Me and him could talk about like the most just asinine of shit for like <laughs> thirty minutes. Maybe oh, yeah. we could talk about other shit so yeah i agree no i mean we we still have to do a uh, a pod t- or not pod tubing uh <laughs> medium damage uh podcast for that because i think honestly it's just that's something that needs to be talked about more especially from the perspective of a content creator and yeah. i think it's just it would have been a great listen honestly we we can uh we'll, we'll put it on the thing that's another thing anyone who's made it this far in the podcast awesome you've made it seven minutes how's it feel yep. uh <laughs> <laughs> uh Give us ideas, like you know, shoot shoot ideas at us. Yeah. We'll talk about you know whatever. So yeah, whatever you guys want us to talk about. Yeah, as long as we understand it, because I couldn't talk about all kinds of things, but I want we're gonna talk about what we can. Right. So, uh, yeah. So since we, I mean, you know, kind of talking about YouTube a little bit. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some seamless segueing here. Right. Uh, are there any future or, or like? You know, you're a content creator. I'm a content creator. Are there anything, or is there anything that you have coming up in the nearby future that maybe you'd want to share, or maybe talk about, or even hint at a little bit? Well, there are uh, several things that are kind of under lock and key, mostly because they're collaborations with other people. So you know Uh, what I mean. I usually with a collaboration for anybody who's not a content creator, and for some people who are, uh, you you kind of have to realize that with a collaboration. It's uh, it's very dependent on other people's time schedule and things like that. And yeah. also, you have to know how to work in your collaborative work with your other work. And based on, like, how much editing it takes for his versus videos, uh, like for Freezax, uh, for instance, or for my anime reviews, uh, mm-hmm. it's a lot of editing. So whenever one oh, of us yeah. has to collaborate with someone, it's going to have to, first off, take kind of a backseat to our main work. And it's also going to just be kind of hard to get the uh, timing going so i have some collaborative stuff definitely that's coming up but it could take a while to come out yeah i'm looking forward to it i don't i don't want to say just yet uh Mm. out of fear of things being ran into the ground but me and you have a few more projects coming up definitely uh potentially together i i I hope they all work through because i am so stoked to like do what we're we're doing yeah Yeah, i hear that we have a podcast thing happening eventually so i'm looking forward to that yes uh and then, I, I, you know what, I'll just reveal it, but I, I won't reveal what it is. But uh, hopefully you will be joining me in one, one of my Versus videos mm-hmm. in the nearby future. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, yes, exa- and uh, vice versa, you're going to be joining me on some of my stuff if everything uh, pans out. Which, I mean, there's no reason it wouldn't. It's just time yeah. again. I mean, I, I, I'm the kind of person that I, I never say 100% for sure. Mm-hmm. Because for all you know, tomorrow... Like, we just get wiped out by the sun or something. So yeah, I like, mean, yeah, exactly. Then, or YouTube could be like, oh, by the way, you're not a content creator anymore. Yeah, get off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, big projects for me that I kind of have going on. I'm starting production on season two of Versus. So, by That's- the time that this goes up, uh, Perfect Dark versus Golden Eye will, will have been up. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, was it amazing? Did you like it? I... I haven't seen it, as you know, but from what I know of it, I am incredibly hyped to see it. 
Yeah, like, I think legitimately. It, oh my god. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. So I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that everyone enjoys it. So, but it's already out. So you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, by that time, I'll definitely be able to tell you how awesome it was. Yeah. All right. So. Is, do you have anything coming out soon or something, something that might oh. be out by the time that this is out? By the time that this is out, well, I'm working on a review for uh, Ergo Proxy, which isn't really a spoiler since I kind of spoiled it in a previous video on my channel. But yeah. uh, for those who don't know, Ergo Proxy is kind of a Blade Runner Matrixy style neo noir thriller, and I have quite a quite a few things to say about it and there's some new editing styles and new uh tricks that I kind of wanted to implement in there. So mm -hmm. that should be up on my channel and I'm actually uh I'm really, really proud of what I've done with it so far, and I think I think people will enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I uh, I don't I don't want to turn this into another compliment fest, but definitely go check out Shinto's stuff. He's he makes some of the best anime reviews out there. Thank you. So, moving forward, 2015. Oh, we're going back again. <laughs> <laughs> moving forward, 2015. <laughs> I, I, I that was not intentional. That literally just came out of my mouth. Uh, what what are some things for 2015 that we look back on and say that's awesome as far as media goes uh things that you've done this past year on right. youtube movies and televisions that you television uh, right. that, that you've watched that. yeah uh, -huh. uh watched and enjoyed and maybe some games that you've played i know that you're a big fan of borderlands and i think borderlands had stuff out yeah. this year or borderlands had a couple yeah they had uh, a okay. the pre pre-sequel and then they had tales from um mm. I haven't played the pre-sequel, but okay. Tales from uh, blew my mind. Like, anything Telltale does, uh, it's a Telltale game for those who don't know. The guys did The Walking Dead Seasons 1 and 2 and all that goodness. Uh, yeah. to anything Telltale does blows my mind. I'm very much into story-driven things, uh, and I just, I loved it. Uh, as far as my channel goes, uh, I'd say the thing I'm most proud of is my Gurren Lagan review. I feel like that, like, took a step up to the point where I'm... Like, I'm never happy with what I do. I'm always like, oh, I could have done better, I could have done better. But production value-wise, mm -hmm. I feel like that was up there. That's one of the few things I could say, you know what? Yeah, I I, I am good at YouTube. Yeah. I am good at what I do because I was really proud of that. I have a I have a, I have a short story about that. Is that. That's the review that you make an Aladdin joke in, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I, I have had to watch that review about three or four times uh, because when I get to the Aladdin review... I hate that song with a passion, <laughs> uh, like a, a, a whole new world. And every time that I get to that part, I'm like, nope, fuck it, nope. Because then I get that song stuck in my head so easily. Oh, I know, I know. And the, like literally the first time that I was watching it and that happened, I was like, fuck you, dude. And I like, had to walk away from it. So, but no, that, that review is really good. I, I, I've told this you, I told this to you, not like in public, but like, you know, in person or whatnot, basically, mm -hmm. uh, that... When I watch your stuff, I, I'm jealous because of how high of a production that you have. And, like, I'm always like, man, I w I'm going to do that. So, actually, in the Perfect Dark uh, GoldenEye review, I actually... Some some of it was not it wasn't sort of inspired by, like, some of the stuff that you've done in your uh, content. So, I'm looking forward to, like, show that to, to everyone. So, because I'm doing stuff... In, I, I did stuff in this review and I, that I have never done with anything else. Mm -hmm. So... I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but your, your Gurren Lagan review, fantastic. Really Thank good you. video. Thank you very much. I'm really, like, genuinely excited and hyped to see what's coming up. Because you've told me a lot about the, what's coming up in this particular versus a review that we've been talking about with Perfect Dark and Goldeneye. And I am so hyped to see it because I know what you're going for. And I've seen, like, your on-camera work and a lot of your other stuff. Mm. And I'm just, to see how you implement it is just... Because I know how high your production value is, and I know that you're, like, super anal like I am. So yeah. I want to see, like, what the end result is, because I am positive that it's going to be something phenomenal, and I'm going to be like, oh, now I have to step up my game. Or or you just Phantom Menace yourself, and you're going to, like, watch it and be like, well, that was shit. No, no, I seriously, I don't, I don't even see that as a possibility, because I know who you are as a content creator, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I know the kind of production value and the kind of like way that you strive uh, to mm -hmm. be, and I just I I don't think that's even in the realm of possibility. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, this is going to be like a, <laughs> a compliment fest, and maybe yeah. that'll be the, be the title of it. At some point, but, we should really get off each other's dicks for real. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. I just it's all slobbery and sweaty. It's all slobbery. But no, legitimately though, like I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like I said before, I've. 
I've talked to other content Tickles. creators where I'm like, oh, that was that was definitely something that I saw visually, but you could do this better. You could do that better. That was technically content, yes, but I don't <laughs> I like I don't feel that way. Technically, you posted that up. Yes. I I am on I'm on a lot of like Facebook groups where you help out people and like whatnot, <laughs> and someone the other day was asking for help. They're like, "What I was wondering what I what I should do with my channel or what what I could do with my channel." And I went and checked out the channel. All that they had was an intro. And oh. I was like, well, you could make content. Yeah, like, you that could. Would, that would, that <laughs> if would you, help. <laughs> if you put content on it, I guarantee it would be better than <laughs> not having content, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just... Um... <laughs> All right. What else have you made this year that you're super proud of and that you want people to check out? Definitely. That I've made this year that I'm super proud of. Well, I launched my gaming channel, my mm -hmm. uh, Shenzhen Gaming. And uh, I used to, like I said, I used to have that all on my anime channel. I moved everything over. I completed... Life is Strange, uh, which I'm proud of the commentary. I'm proud of just everything about that, honestly. Uh, we'll get into gaming in a bit when I uh, talk about like my favorite games of the year and stuff. But I'm proud yeah. of that channel. I think the layout and the format and everything is kind of... It hasn't been updated in a while. But mm -hmm. I plan on a, what happened with that. A uh, really short story here is that uh, I had to reformat my computer and I didn't realize that Telltale games don't save your uh, your progress to like some kind of Steam Cloud like uh, like Life is Strange did, Don't Nod, and things like that do. Uh, yeah. So I lost all my progress on things that I was going through, like uh, Tales from the Borderlands and uh, Game of Thrones. So oh, since man. then, yeah, and I, I was at the end. I was one episode away from completion on both of them. So I, uh, I, I've been disheartened by that. I'm like, oh, God, that sucks. But what I plan on doing is going to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Genesis, and streaming um, me. Check yeah. it out. Yep, exactly. Little plug there. <laughs> don't don't mind that. But, <laughs> but uh, streaming me regaining progress, getting back to where I was on those two games in particular. That's uh, actually a really good idea. So. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. And then completing them on my channel. Uh, not the same issue, but with Game Theater, my Let's Play channel, I, we, we've been trying to do Fallout. And we've recorded Fallout like three separate times, and it's been deleting our progress every time we get into it. And we're six episodes in, and I'm just fucking sick of the game already. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to. Bug. I've saved this. Like, we're we're doing the actual saving, like not quick saving. Right. Uh, and it's just I like I'm already sick of the game. I'm like, fuck this game. Fuck the Xbox One. Fuck the world. I can't do it. Yep. So anytime that we try to do. A relatively newer game on game theater it just doesn't fucking work out like that's such ever. an odd bug to i don't even comp like what i know yeah. people have had problems with fallout i i know but like i haven't heard of that one yeah and i just i couldn't i mean like okay so the first time we were really rushed we had like we could only do two episodes right uh because heather had to be at work and we wanted to get an episode up that night mm -hmm. um and basically we got like 40 minutes in or so and because we were rushed we didn't we weren't able to make our character all the way through so when it didn't save it was sort of a blessing in disguise it was like cool now we could remake our character so we went back we, re we, re we uh, remade the character we put about an hour hour more uh and then at the end of that recording session uh one it didn't save and two heather's laptop that we re used to record in game theater just shit on us and we lost so much fucking footage. I hate that. And yeah, it's just been a. It's. I, being a, trying to do Let's Plays is like one of the most difficult things you can do. Because once something messes up, it's just like the most disheartening. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, no, I, that same thing, like, not to, you know, step on your story, but that no, that's same fine. I'm thing. I'm done with it. <laughs> no, no, I mean, not to, like, you know, railroad it and take, uh, like, your idea and make it mine. How um, dare you? <laughs> but Shouldn't that's. You? exact thing has happened to me with uh the again tales from borderlands playthrough i did that one and uh i think i recorded two uh episodes in a row which is about four hours of gameplay per episode so about eight hours i was up uh recording and i found out that uh something went wrong with my obs which is the software that i used to record and it was just it was like eight hours were down the drain and i was like oh my god are you fucking kidding me that's happened to pc quest a few times where they've recorded a few things and it's just it's just shit on them afterwards yeah so i mean so. a lot of people no 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 it's i it's just like that's just more to the point of that like people go oh you know let's plays are uh easy content to create and to some extent they can be mm -hmm. but when one thing goes wrong you have to if you think about it in terms of like a job right 
if yeah. one thing goes wrong and it ruins your entire workday, which is eight hours, uh, oh, yeah. like it's that's you know that's content that I'm not putting out. And if it were a job, if I were like getting paid, you know, a decent amount of money, that's eight hours of my work, my time working, it's gone. Yeah, that so, I I understand completely. That's yeah. why it's one reason why it's so disheartening too, because it's like if you're a YouTuber trying to make a let's play into a job. Mm-hmm. And you lose shit like that. Like, it feels like you're losing part of what you're working for. It's exactly. just like, I want to do shit, but I can't because I just fucking... Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we turned we turned this conversation into, what are we proud of to what has gone wrong this year? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the only other video that I can really think of that I'm proud of... I started uh, Complete Squad with mm-hmm. Sony Gator, Heather, on on Game Theater. And we've, we've done a few good Let's Plays. We've done Super Mario 64... That we're in the middle one. of doing Diddy Kong Racing, mm-hmm. and Heather is killing it. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so stupid and bad <laughs> at that game. It's like legitimately though. I mean, I, I get, I'm not good at it either. Diddy Kong Racing's never been my game. I, I, I usually only, I go the right way. People, I only know two people in history who are good at Diddy Kong Racing, and it's Heather and Heather's dad, and that's. It. <laughs> <laughs> now she's she's a boss, dude. I've seen her like killing the time trials. But um, you you gotta start going the right way, man. On the track, like. yeah, yeah. Well, I it's one of those things. I'm playing it and I get disheartened, so I just like decide to. Get, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna go backwards. Fuck it. I'm gonna t-bone someone. No, I get it. I'm, I'm the same way when I'm on the free. I mean, when I'm playing video games. But it's it's like I don't know. It's it's humorous to watch. But mm-hmm. then like at, I'm just like, oh, dude, just hand her the controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Uh, and the only other video that I can think of that I'm really, like, really, really proud of this year was my Banjo Tooie versus Banjo Kazooie video, because I think th- that's the one that people have taken most issue with. So, no, I mean, legitimately, I'm 100 percent with what you said there. Uh, that was just you're right. You you were right in that review. The other one that I really liked of yours was the um, Star Wars versus uh, uh, Star Fox. Oh yeah, I was that- actually really proud of that script. Like I, I. I a little secret, but I hate the Mario Party script with like mm. a passion. I want to redo that video already. Uh, and then whenever I wrote that script for the Star Fox versus Star Wars script, I was like, I think I've redeemed myself a little bit. Yeah, I honestly I didn't have a problem with your Mario Party script, although I can see that it's not your strongest work. It still leagues better than other people. But mm-hmm. aside from that, like I, I get where I get oh, where God, you're coming Shinzo, from. Get off my dick, man! It feels. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, okay. Point is, yeah, your Star Fox review is good. <laughs> well, you know, since we're trading compliments, I'll do it one more time and then we're done. <laughs> you're the devil's the part timer is a as a part timer. That review legit. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're done with that. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right. We'll we'll move on. We'll move away from us. We'll stop we'll stop talking about us. Yeah. Uh movies and television mm-hmm. you've seen this year. Uh, and it doesn't have to be from this year necessarily, mm-hmm. but just shit that you've seen this year, uh, that you've loved and enjoyed. Okay. Um, my, my yep. go-to movie of the year before we start this off, uh, that I absolutely, I think is, is wonderful is Kingsman, the secret service. I haven't seen it, but I've heard great things. Yeah, it is. It, it was, it's the most surprising movie I've seen this year. And if you haven't seen it, which you haven't, but if you know a listener hasn't seen it, go watch it. Warning, it's really bloody. Uh but it has a lot of really good like like the action in it is like superb and there's a scene in the movie if you don't mind me spoiling just a little bit. I don't mind. Uh so spoilers for Kingsman for anyone who's watching. I I'm from Topeka, Kansas, or I'm not from Topeka, Kansas, but I live in Topeka, Kansas, uh which is where the Westboro Baptist Church is. Oh, um, I didn't know that. And I fucking despise them with, like, a passion. As well you should. Uh, there is a scene in it where I believe they are mocking the Westboro Baptist Church, and they just slaughter all of them. And, like, a five-minute continuous camera shot where they're just, like, killing all these members of the church. And it is glorious. <laughs> sounds like... That just sounds cathartic. I mean, um, didn't Kevin Smith do uh, Red State, which was essentially that... It just made into a movie, right? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I I uh I've seen it a few times. I can't remember everything about it, but I'm pretty sure almost all the members die except for the main guy. And oh, really? uh, that's 
just cathartic to watch. Mm. It's a, I don't want to get political, but it, that that one scene right there is just, it's beautiful. The action in Kingsman is is awesome. It has like a perfect ending. The the script is on point. It's just it's a wonderful film all around. Uh, but I understand if someone watches it and they're bothered by the graphic elements of it and mm-hmm. Samuel L. Jackson's performance because I know a lot of people were like were bothered that he had a lisp. Like his character has a lisp in it. Well, he has a lisp in real life. Yeah, well, he he did, and that's why he chose to do it. That's that was the the deal. And mm-hmm. uh, people were like, like I've actually seen this conversation happen in class reports. Like I didn't like his lisp, and then someone was like, "Well, that was actually Samuel L. Jackson's idea." And then someone turned to him and was like, "That doesn't make it good." And I was yeah. like, "That's perfect." <laughs> that's so. yeah, I agree. Uh, that's something I people I think people don't take into consideration enough is that somebody goes, "Oh, well, you know." This was an idea from uh, somebody else, or this uh, particular plot point was explained in a movie or show or whatever. Just because it was uh, preconceived or because somebody you like thought of it doesn't make it good. Exactly. Well, one day, maybe I'll do a video or we'll do a podcast about it where I talk about fallacies and like mm-hmm. argumentation when it comes to like media. Because I, that's, that's something that I'm uh, very passionate about is just arguing in general. Yeah, me so. too. <laughs> I think that would be phenomenal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anything that has has stuck out to you this year? And television, you know, anime and whatnot. So it's... Right. Uh, well, I mean, this year, uh, <clears throat> I have, I am not a big... Uh, I'm not big on movies. And All I right. feel like, uh, you know, that's kind of like weird to say. People are like, what? You don't like movies? Uh, it's just because I feel like it's the weakest form of visual media. Because mm. you don't get to know the characters as well as you would in a TV series or in something that's long running. You don't get to know the characters. The plots aren't stretched out as long. A good TV show is better than the best movie, in my opinion. I I agree with, with the small exceptions, but I agree mm-hmm. So for the most part. But go, yeah. go on. Uh, and I mean, there are certain movies where it's like Citizen Kane and stuff, where it's like, okay, yes, objectively, that's a fantastic movie, and it's probably better than a lot of TV shows because of what it did for the medium and like how ingenious it was and what it was trying to say and this and that and like Shawshank Redemption, The Shining, certain things. But mm-hmm. in terms of getting to know a character and in terms of unraveling a plot, I don't think a movie can beat television. So I don't watch a lot of movies. I just don't, but uh, because I don't get invested in them. So mm-hmm. like my favorite uh, TV shows are always going to beat my favorite movies. And uh, that being said, there were a couple movies that I did see and a couple that I liked. Uh, For instance, the first one is probably going to be a bit contentious and that's Age of Ultron. Uh, That's probably entirely colored by the fact that Joss Whedon's my favorite person on this planet. (laughs) So, like, I love him. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite show. uh, Oh yeah, that's right. Are you big on Firefly? Yeah, Firefly, Angel, Buffy, all my favorite things. All right, then I've... I'm trying to get in a firefly. Just saying. I, I'm, I'm going to try to finish it. Uh, the only thing that has bothered me about Firefly so far, it's, it's actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. I do not like the camera work. Like, I'm a big Ugh. stickler for camera work. And I, I don't like the camera work in Firefly. I, it's definitely, it's unconventional. That's yes. for sure. Yeah, I love it. Specifically in the first five minutes, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, no, yeah. The first ep- well, let me go into that for a minute, because I could talk about Joss Whedon forever, but, like, literally, the whole podcast could be about him, but, um... <laughs> Eventually. I'll, I'll, ta- I'll just say one thing, that the, uh, the studio, the first five minutes, yeah, the whole first episode's not that good, and the reason for that is because the studio, uh, he was like, oh, I'm gonna start off with, uh, the episode Serenity, the episode where, uh, how, how far are you into it? Uh, jeez. You know, I don't care about spoilers, we'll, we'll just say that. Okay, so now, it's been out long enough that I probably know everything uh-huh. without knowing that I know everything. Gotcha. Okay. So the episode where River shows up was supposed to be the first episode. Okay. But the uh, the Fox because they're dumbasses were like, no, nah, we need a train episode. We need you guys to go heist a train. And Joss Whedon was like, um, this is a show about space cowboys. And they're like, yes, trains. And he's like, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> trains, so, trains in space. It's exactly. Genius. <laughs> it's genius. Let's so, cancel a show. <laughs> exactly. So they did that. So the first episode is the worst episode in the series. It's not a bad episode. There are several p- points in it that are some of my favorite moments in the entire series because Joss Whedon is just that good. But mm-hmm. is the worst episode in the series. So if you find it difficult to get past it, that's understandable. But yeah. push through it because every episode past it's amazing. Yeah, I have. I mean, I, I think I'm four or five episodes in, mm-hmm. and I, I really like it. So I want to con- continue watching it. Uh, Heather doesn't like it at all. Uh, oh. So it's been like when I watch it, I have to like watch it like 
without her in the room or else like it, like I think nothing's more like annoying than someone who's like picking at every little thing sometimes yeah. it can be funny but it's mm-hmm. like man I want to enjoy it like I don't love it I like it right. but at the same time I want to like defend the fuck out of it <laughs> yeah I got you yeah. yeah so Age of Ultron okay Age of Ultron <laughs> um a lot of, I'm not going to go into like a full review about it, but of course. a lot of people had problems with certain things, uh, <clears throat> and I can agree with most of them. Uh, Quicksilver wasn't that great. Scarlet Witch wasn't that great. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the uh, Ultron himself, like how his whole transformation happened was way too quick and weird. Yeah. And the love story between uh, uh, Black, uh, the freaking Scarlet Black Johansson, Widow. yeah, Black Widow. I always get her. I was. I always want to say Scarlet Witch because Scarlet Johansson. I am Johansson. the exact same fucking way. And yeah. My friends won't let it go. <laughs> Yeah, it's but I mean her name's Scarlett Johansson. Get off my dick! Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> you know. But so Scarlett Johansson and uh, Mark Ruffalo, that romance makes no fucking sense to mm-hmm. a lot of people, and I get it. But um, <clears throat> the big thing, the big thing that came from it, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> was that um, was that horrible hacking cough. But um, no, the big thing that came from it was people were like, oh, uh, this was huge on Twitter. Was um, people were like, oh. Uh, uh, Black Widow, she wants to be a mom, and like you're pigeonholing her into a role, and like her going, her thinking she's a monster because she can't have kids. Like it got to the point where people were like harassing Joss Whedon because he's a feminist, like I am, and he, uh, they were like, oh, get off the fucking internet, essentially, because yeah. you made a female character that just wants to be a mom. And I have to say, you're stupid. If like, okay, I'm sorry. If you if you think that you I, you don't deserve breath because you're <laughs> like. By uh, the way, uh, this podcast is going to be pretty. Uh, it's not going to be after darkish, but it's definitely going to be if you're like we don't intend to offend people necessarily. Right. If we offend you though, sorry, suck a dick. Yeah, like, sorry. To an extent, I I honestly don't mean to offend you. But there are certain things that I am passionate about and certain things that I feel like if you don't comprehend or grasp that you should either A, learn and listen and maybe like try to get some more knowledge or B, shut the fuck up. So <laughs> like, legitimately. So this particular thing boggles my mind how people like got mad over the Scarlet Witch thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. They first off, her Did best friend. Ha- hmm? No, you go ahead. Okay. Her best friend has, like, the white picket fence family with, like, all that. And that's constantly being shoved in her face. Mm -hmm. Uh, Secondly, she can't have kids. She was basically against her will with no, like, no preconceived knowledge of it, nothing. They they sterilized her. So she can't have kids. Uh, Regardless of what you think, if you didn't use your right arm for anything... Like, you never used it. You never used it whatsoever. And then it went missing one day, you'd fucking miss it. Like, yeah, regardless... Like, I want my right arm back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everybody's shoving their right arm in your face and shit. Like, that's... that You would legitimately miss it. So, it's not that she has to be a mom. It's that the option was taken from her. And yeah. that is what makes her feel like a monster. Because she can't have kids because she can't have that perfect life that she doesn't even have the option to do it. She mm-hmm. is she sees herself as less than human because she does not have the options that other humans have. I get that. So I totally get where it's coming from and maybe she would never have become a mother. Maybe she would have stayed at a badass assassin or whatever and being a mother does not make you not feminine uh, not a feminist. It just means that you're badass in a different way. There's tons of badass mother characters. Oh yeah, J- definitely. It's like th- to say that it's uh unfeminist to put that put her in that role is fucking idiotic. Like something was taken from her innately as a human being that would sadden you and it would make you feel lesser regardless you know, of you, what was taken away. You've been waiting to to say all this for a while, haven't you? Yeah, it just pisses me off. You, you sound <laughs> like you sound like you're really into it. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I never, I mean, I, I never thought like, oh no, she wants to be a mom or anything, you know, Ooh. I was just fine with it. I was like, cool. She, that's what she wants to do. That's fine with me. Or like that, yeah. you know, that it makes sense. Uh, my issues with, uh, here's how I'll put it. I actually really like Age of Ultron, like mm-hmm. a lot. I think it's a bad movie. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's that great of a movie, mm-hmm. but I really like it. Like, I love Ultron. I love it. I, I love his character. Like his character in comparison, which we won't talk about this a lot because uh, next week will be uh, Marvel possibly. Right. Um, but his character seems a little bit more fleshed out as far as like character wise, you know, than other characters. And the yeah. the the big thing that's wrong with the movie, in my opinion, is the pacing. Like the pacing in that movie is so fucking all over the place. I'm 100 percent with you. I and, love Joss Whedon, and he's damn near infallible to me. But you're right. Yeah. Like. 
I, I think part of it was just they wanted to do a little bit too much in too little time. Honestly, as much as like by the time that that by the time that they get to like the the big climactic scene in that movie, I was like, finally. Yeah. Like at the same time, if they would have given that movie twenty more minutes, thirty more mm-hmm. minutes, mm-hmm. you would they could have done so much more. They could have done what they wanted to do. Uh, well, so pacing issues. I'm 100 percent with you, and uh, I I think. Again, a lot of people put the fault on Joss Whedon. It's not his fault. It's ran by Disney. Come on. They are the biggest fucking corporation in the world at this yeah. point. So, no, it's not Joss Whedon's fault. They were like, you need to put uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in there and blah, 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 blah. And, like, they threw, they had him throw way too much in there. Like, not all of that was his fault. And also, there's there's supposedly a director's cut with an hour more of footage that will yeah, just I, never be released. I, I would... I would definitely pay money to see that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that hour of footage could have fixed the pacing. It could have fixed, like, how Ultron came to be, because that was way too absurd and quick. Yeah. It could have fixed that uh, Quicksilver and uh, uh, Scarlet Witch were, were were just kind of added on. They felt tacked on. Yeah. It could have I, fixed all those things. Although I do, uh, I've always, because I've seen that, I saw that movie like four or five times in theaters. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Quicksilver in the movie, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Uh, when, I don't you compare, hate him. when you compare him, or when you compare him to uh, the one that we got in Fox, which I, I gotta say, the one that we got in Fox in Days of Future Past had a great scene, had a wonderful yes. scene, yes. but he wasn't fleshed out. No, I feel like even even though this this one ne- necessarily wasn't fleshed out either, mm. he still had a character to him. While I felt like the other guy was just like, "Hey, I'm Quicksilver. I'm fast. It's my character." Ha ha ha. Exactly. Look at this, this amazing scene. Yeah, this guy felt like you know, like th- they had something going going with him. Yeah. I'm, I'm right makes, there with you. Yeah. So, yeah. Other movies, uh, because we'll we'll definitely get more into those ones later on. Yes. Uh, big one that stuck out to me this year. I'll say. I'll, I'll just say real quick. We will, we won't go into too much detail. I loved Ant Man. I thought Ant Man was Ant Man was surprising. I, I you, uh, haven't, haven't seen, seen it. it. Really? Nope. It it. I didn't really think much of it because I like to go into movies thinking that they're going to suck because then maybe I'll like it more. Okay. Uh, Ant Man really rang with me on, on certain levels that the other movies haven't yet. So we won't go into too much detail, especially since I don't want to spoil that one for, for you. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's a Marvel movie. You, you know the beats. The, yeah, the you know what's same. going to happen, essentially. Uh, Inside <clears throat> Out. Very uh, impressive. I, mm, man, okay. Uh, oh, this is okay. definitely the contentious one. I feel uh, it's it's overrated. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I, um Good. I, I I could definitely see that. I don't I, I don't I have this issue with overrated, underrated stuff. But um Inside Out I don't think is as good as as it like it it, it I don't think it should have gotten all the things that it got like it's like standing like at ninety nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Uh and that to me blows me away that that many people like it that much because I could definitely see why people will argue with it because honestly, it's a good film. I, I don't th- I don't think there's really any problems with it. Uh, but it is boring at times. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest issue with it is like there's not this big scale adventure yeah. that we that we get in a lot of the other movies. But at the same time, the ending with like you know teaching people to be sad or whatnot. Like I've always been like, hey, if I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. Fuck oh yeah, off. same here. Yeah, uh, that to me is something that I don't think that we've ever seen too much. Is is something that's saying that it's okay to be sad, and that's I, one reason why that movie hits me hard. And then there's the part with the cat at the very end that is the best part ever. The cat? The When they're kind of going through the credits and it, go, it goes into the mind of a cat and, oh, and it has all the emotions that are cats and one cat like hits a hits a switch or something like that and then the cat just like goes crazy for a second. And yeah. Funny <laughs> as fuck. That was good. No, I agree. Uh, Inside Out's not a bad movie. Don't. Like, it's just people are like, oh, it's, it was Pixar, right? Yeah, it was Pixar. Pixar also had a second one come out this year, which I want to talk about for just a little bit. But All right, let me just kill one quick th- thought in my head, real quick. Uh, okay, is that uh, Inside Out? People are like, "Oh, it's amazing! It's Pixar's best." It's not the first ten oh, minutes of not. Up, yeah, first ten minutes of Up were better than all of Inside Out, and the first half of Wall-E was better than Inside Out. If you ask me, yeah, I I, I agree on Wall-E because I, I here's the, my here's my opinion on Wall-E. Mm-hmm. Wall-E's great for the first half and shit for the second. That's just how I've always... I'm like, I don't know why this... Like, I don't know. I love the silent film mm-hmm. style too. to it. And I didn't even... S- 
as soon as you can hear people talk, I'm like, ah, I don't like it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think it was shit in the second half. It was average in the second half. I like, usually I, say shit when I mean not nearly as good, like it's mediocre. Just, yeah, yeah. So I, agree. I need, to, I need to, I need to keep my, uh, need to keep that in check. But that, that's something I'll do. Yeah, um, I was fine. Uh, even when Ava showed up, I was like, okay, cool, cool. Right on. We got, uh, we got flip side to Wally. This is great. Yeah. As soon as they got on that ship, I was like, oh, I don't care. Yeah, like I, I, I mean. I, I do feel that, like, Wally in the first half is, like, some artistry and whatnot. Yeah. All right. The other Pixar film that came out this year was The Good Dinosaur. I believe it's going to be Pixar's first flop. Yeah, I think that's what everybody's saying. I haven't seen it, so it's, that... It's yeah. good. It really is. It's good. It's not It's not Pixar good, but it's good. Uh, but It's like DreamWorks good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> But it, it's good. Um, But it's losing money. Like... It's gonna lose about 150 million for Pixar, and well, the reason why that upsets me because the movie is good, mm-hmm. but now I'm afraid that Pixar is gonna be like, "Well, we can't make anything ever fucking new. Here's a sequel. Here's a sequel." Yeah. So, but yeah, Good Dinosaur was solid. Uh, Inside Out was better though than than Good Dinosaur. Mm-hmm. So just that's that's my In- deal. Yeah, I haven't seen The Good Dinosaur. I want to just because I like Pixar. I do. Mm-hmm. But uh, And Inside Out, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's just, it's above average. That's that's how I feel about it. Yeah, it's not as good as everyone... It, it, not as good as like as all the praise it's gotten. Yeah, Pixar's done better. Yeah, Toy Story, uh, Incredibles, and Finding Nemo. I'm not actually a fan of Finding Nemo, but I Me do either. see why people like it so much. Yeah. But I would put those three over uh, Inside Out any day. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I would do that for Wally, for Up, for uh, like uh, Incredibles, all the Toy Stories. Uh, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I haven't seen Up. I want to so badly. Man, I'm I not going to spoil a damn thing for you. I, I the thing I know what happens like in the beginning, mm-hmm. and I think that's one reason why I've avoided it because I am a crybaby. <laughs> uh, with with going bringing back to pick, uh, to Inside Out a little bit. Mm-hmm. 30 seconds into the lava shore, I was in tears. <laughs> like, I saw, I evaluated what was happening within 30 seconds, and I knew what it was about, and I just broke the fuck down. I I'm believe like, it. This, you know, I'm, I'm this young man, grown man, whatever, like, in a movie theater, sobbing mm. next to my girlfriend, who's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I'm just <laughs> like, he's a mountain. He can't love. <laughs> And I just broke down. Oh my god! But yeah, I I am a crybaby. I cry at the just the the most stuff. Any, <laughs> the most stuff. The most stuff. Any other movies that you've seen this year? Mm. God, you know, I can't think. Well, there's one movie that I've seen this year that we'll definitely be talking about in a minute. But aside from that, mm-hmm. not that I can think of. Yeah, I don't think there's any other good movies. No, <laughs> uh, Jurassic World came out. It oh. it's, it. It's a bad movie. It's, th- in my opinion, the second best Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> that's true, <laughs> but that doesn't make it good. <laughs> Chris Pratt was good in it. Chris, yeah, Chris Pratt's good. I actually like the kids. I I generally don't like don't like kid actors anymore any too much because that's yeah. the thing to do is you just hate kid actors because you know that's who we are. Um, I don't mind them, but I don't like the roles that they play. Like I don't like how Hollywood utilizes children. Yeah. But they they were good, uh, yeah, fine. and then I actually the the fight the ending drastic or the like okay so two things that the movie gave me that I that I cherish it for is riding a motorcycle next to Velociraptors and yes. the dinosaur fight at the end like those great. two things are things that I didn't know that I needed until I got them and then I was like wow I can yeah. die now that dinosaur fight at the end felt like Jurassic Park. I was like, "Oh my god, this is what this is what I felt like when I was a kid in 93." That's <laughs> like legitimately I was like, "Oh my god, it's back." Like that was amazing. Yeah. Um we w- we went back to Jurassic World two times, two or three times after that just for that fight because yeah. Heather was like jumping up and down whenever that was happening in the movie theater and she didn't want to go to the movie originally. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, but I I think that movie isn't good. Like, that movie is, like, under Age of Ultron for me. Mm-hmm. But the ending scene, except for the one part where it's like, hey, look, the Velociraptor's a hero, and it has, like, 
moves like slightly in slow motion oh, and then, like, yeah. calls out to him. I'm like, that's fucking stupid. Like, does anyone stop else... that. Yeah, does anyone else see this stupid shit? Yeah. Uh, that, that that one was uh that was the surprise of the year, I think. That was good, yeah. Uh the main the main thing that I have to say about Jurassic World is that the part where the girl who did nothing get swooped up by the pterodactyl and like tortured for like five minutes before finally having the sweet release of death. That was upsetting to me because it was like, okay, yes, you've done stuff similar in the first movie with the guy in the toilet and stuff. He was a villain. Like we, with the other guy in the car, when Newman was in the car, like that when those come up in moments happen and it's like over the top and crazy, that happens to villains. Like she didn't deserve it. It almost felt like torture porn for a second. I was like, what? What the fuck are you doing? I think what? that bothered me, but I think it bothered me in a way that I think works for the film. Because the thing is, is that you expect the villains to die, right? So whenever you kill off someone who isn't, who doesn't deserve it, mm-hmm. it's like holy shit. Like it's like even though I, I, I will admit I was also very uncomfortable watching that scene. Mm-hmm. I think that works to its benefit, though. I, in its own me, little way, it wor- it works to its benefit in terms of shock for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Aside from that, like I, I don't mind if a good character dies. I don't. But to mm-hmm. that kind of moment to me is a comeuppance moment. That's the kind of thing where you want to cheer and be like, "Holy shit, the dinosaurs are doing their thing!" But I was too uncomfortable. I was too. It felt foreign. It felt like it didn't belong. That's just do me. Think, do you think that maybe they had intended to originally have her be a shitty person? If that's the case, then I would have much more. I would have been much happier if they had gone with that. Because honestly, I forgot that she was a human being until she died. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah like, I for, she was yeah. background singer. I mean, I, yeah, honestly, but I, I did get a feeling that she was going to not be a good character that we were supposed to like. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm looking at a list of movies right now that I've seen this year. Two that stick out to me: uh, Mad Max Fury Road. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I did not like it's. It's critically acclaimed. I didn't mm-hmm. like it as much as other people. My my big issue with it is the whole entire movie. They're running from these people or whatnot. Then they get to where they want to go, or they get to sort of a place or whatnot, and then they just fucking go back. Like <laughs> I was like I was sitting there watching it. I was like, th- really? <laughs> like it? It's literally like let's go from point A to point B, and now let's go back to point A. That bothered me. Uh, and then The Martian. Uh, I'm, I don't even know what The Martian is, but... The Martian was the movie with Matt Damon, where he gets... He, he's an astronaut, and he's part of like an astronaut group or whatnot, and they get caught in a storm, and all of his group escapes from Mars, except for him, and he has to stay there for like three or four years, I think. And he has oh, to okay. like... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Amazing. Flat really? out Amazing predictable but amazing okay uh and those are the big ones that stuck out to me we'll be talking about the the other one in a bit but those are the big ones that stuck out to me uh television television okay uh right off the bat two best things on tv in my opinion this year uh daredevil and jessica jones Mm. even though they weren't television quote unquote they were netflix i don't give a shit they're they're two best things on tv they're television yeah i uh i agree i actually uh the the those are going to be the two reasons why we talk about Marvel mm-hmm. next week or next two weeks or what, whatever. The next podcast, it's going to be Marvel. Right. Uh, and those are the two reasons because those two are some of the best the things that Marvel has ever produced. Yes, easily. Uh, I'm still on the fence of which one I like more, if I like Daredevil or Jessica Jones more. I like both more. <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, like we'll 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 go into it more, but yeah, those mm. two are the big uh things that I've I've seen this year. Yeah. As far as television goes, we don't watch television necessarily. Yeah. Uh, it's all Netflix. Um however, See, the the other show that I watched this year and I was really impressed with it was Kill a Kill. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really liked it. I didn't think I would because when I was first seeing it, I was too I too I, got, I felt too fan servicey to me, you know, yeah. at first. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I feel like it's too on the nose. And then I watched mm. it and I was like, they justify it. And that's fine. <laughs> so Yeah, I'm a huge opponent of fan service. I think it's just lazy writing and a shitty way to get people to watch your shitty shit. But mm-hmm. Kill La Kill is astounding to me because to me, it's a commentary on fan service. It's like 
basically like, oh, we're going to give the fans what they want, but we're going to commentate on it throughout the entirety of it. And it's not uh, single-handed where it's just like, oh, look at the titties. Look at the titties. No, it's like, hey, here's a dong. Like, it's yeah. it's very even-handed in terms of its fan service, and I feel like it's a commentary on fashion and fan service in general, and it's just, it blew me away. Normally, I would hate, hate, hate it, but based on, like, the commentary that was trying to make and where the plot went and how they explained it and how they justified everything, I loved it. Mm, yeah, I, I agree. I, re- I was really into it, so. Yeah, there, uh, there goes, there goes, you talking about animes. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... I started, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, the the anime that mm-hmm. everyone's talking about, One Punch Man. I haven't seen it because I feel like I'm gonna hate it. Uh, essentially, it's a uh, it's a show about a guy named Sa- uh, Saitama, I think, or mm-hmm. Saitana, and a uh, dude fucking can beat anybody in one punch. That's the that's the idea, and it seems real dumb. But uh, you know, it seems to be getting a lot of acclaim and a lot of following. But I think that's because people have power fantasies and they just want to be the most powerful, and they just want to see people get their assholes kicked in because <laughs> lazy writing. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, but I, I generally this is how I am with all. Uh, anime and generally TV shows except for things that I'm really looking forward to mm-hmm. I don't watch an anime until after the hype has died down yeah that, and that's fair I, this sounds weird but I don't want to be a part of the conversation I hate yeah. talking to anime nerds usually with the no, it's garbage. Of you, so. <laughs> no it's really hard to talk to the anime community uh, not that the, it's like a bad community but the people it's the thing is it's a okay I uh, probably just pissed off people who who would be coming from your channel to watch this, but well, no, I'm probably gonna piss them off more. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, okay, the thing is, when it comes to talking to people about anime, is a lot of people who are now into anime are in their like 14 to 17, a little bit older. You know, there there are some like old school anime fans that are like in their 20s and shit, like I am. But mm-hmm. there's a large portion of them are like in their teens and for them this generation of anime these tokyo ghouls and the comic kills and all the stuff that i don't personally like is it's technically their childhood it's what they're growing up with it's their dragon ball z it's their evangelion it's their things that i watched trigun cowboy bebop as a kid so yeah. to them it's phenomenal and it speaks to them it's designed to speak to them whereas i see the problems i see the fallacies i see the plot holes i see the bad character development and this and that they don't see that because mm-hmm. it's designed for them and they will so, though they will yeah, see it eventually, uh, eventually so. they're gonna grow up and they're gonna be like oh that was kind of garbage but right now they are staunchly defending it because it is their childhood mm-hmm. and i get it i get where they're coming from it doesn't mean that they're not wrong because legitimately, objectively, with a lot of these shows, like, for instance, A Kamiga Kill, probably One Punch Man, just from what I've heard of it, and a couple of other things, uh, they're not good. They just, I, they objectively aren't that good. There's a lot of problems with them, but I get where you're coming from. I was the same way. I'm not going to hate on you for it, man, you know? I'm but, looking forward to your One Punch Man review, so now yeah. you have to do one. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm going to eventually. There's no doubt about that. I'm going to review every damn thing eventually. But, uh... Other things that I saw this year that I liked. Uh, let's see here. In terms of anime, I started watching a lot of different ones. I started Death Parade, which if you guys haven't seen it, watch it for the intro. The intro is amazing. Aside from that, it's it's okay. It's not bad. It's not mm-hmm. good. It's whatever. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. It exists. It, it quite literally is what it is. It's a <laughs> show about a bar that's apparently purgatory. Uh, you go there, you play games against somebody else who died, and by the end of it, they judge you, one of you goes to hell, one of you gets reborn. That's essentially what it is. And throughout it, the people who've died, their story unfolds. It's very episodic, very story of the week. And it's whatever, it's got its own appeal, and it's mm-hmm. interesting. But it's it, it's not that great. Uh, then there's Rolling Girls, which I saw, which is from Studio Trigger, I believe. Same guys that made Kill a Kill and Gurren Lagann. Er, well, Gurren Lagann was Gynex, but they broke off in Trigger. Anyways, uh, it was alright. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was whatever. Then there was uh, Maria no Jinketsu or Maria the Virgin. That shit was whatever. Like I don't know. There wasn't anything that great this year. Most of the stuff that I saw this year that I liked came from uh, beforehand, like Ergo Proxy and things like that. So I mean, yeah, I feel the same way. To be honest with you, yeah. uh, this is a small thing. I'm a huge Pokemon fan, mm-hmm. and uh a small tangent but i do not like the anime series pokemon black and white it is absolute trash every single character can be described by their catchphrase that's just how they are and it drives me fucking nuts x and y on the other hand which has been coming out this year last year and stuff like that amazing so much better (laughs) i haven't kept up since like uh um what's it called since 
I guess, Johto League. Like, I really haven't kept up. <laughs> then you are 10 years behind or so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's yeah. That's just fine, though, because it's, it's really, it's, I don't know. It is like, when people are like, anime is for kids. I'm like, no, it's not. Pokemon is, though. Pokemon is definitely for kids. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm a, I mean, I'm a man child. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm fucking 29 years old and I review anime. You <laughs> you're talking to in man child. It's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and not again, anime is not just for children. A lot of it is, though. And, you know, people would objectively be like, oh, you're watching cartoons. You're, you know, you're man child. So, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Or do you want to move on to games? Uh, oh, well, I guess I could say iZombie was all right. Uh, the Flash, from what I've seen of it, and, like, was good. It's better than Arrow. Arrow went to shit. Uh, well, not went to shit. That's not that great. Supergirl is at best okay. And the other thing that I want to watch is Ash vs. Evil Dead, just because I was a huge fan of Army of Darkness and Evil Dead, and, uh, I love Bruce Campbell. So, I definitely want to get into that. I hear great things about it. Uh, seems like it's gonna be amazing. Let's mm. move on. All right, uh, <laughs> video games that you played this year that you, or that came out this year that you played this year that you're really into. Uh, oh, I can man. start us off real quick if you want me to. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, the big one, because since it came out, I have hardly pulled it out of my Wii U. Has been Splatoon. Mm. I've been playing just the uh, so much fucking Splatoon. I love it so much. Uh, uh, what else this year? I'm I I'm actually a big. Uh, a poser to uh, Mario Maker came out. Really? Everyone was all like, it looks so good. And I was like, it's not. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's a tool to make games, but it's not a game. You know, like, that, that's how I feel. No, yes, I completely uh, agree. Like, I, I mean, it, feel, it feels like an app that you should download on your Wii U, but it, it shouldn't be. It doesn't feel like something that you should buy for 60 fucking dollars. Right. But now, to an extent, I, I agree. Like, yes, it doesn't feel like a game. Yes, it feels more like an app. But, like, I don't know if personally I'd get into playing it. I might get into making levels. But damn, if, wa like, watching Let's Players, not all of them, but some Let's Players play it, is just the most entertaining shit in the world. Oh, yeah. It, it has made good for the internet. Like, very. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think people have really been into it. Uh,. And I'm in a very small minority when I, whenever I say that the that I think it's not a good game. Mm -hmm. I can understand though, like the it, it's really a community based game, which is which is is good in yeah. its own way. But like, imagine you know you're picking up the game and then you find out that like it like because if you just if you play the game by itself, it sucks. Which which you know you can argue that you use you know the community and stuff like that. But like, I don't know. I'm not much of like a community type person when it comes to video games. I I want to play my game right there right and i get I that i also want the game to be built for me like that's my big thing is like i want like i don't want to build the game i want you to build the game and i want you mm -hmm. to make a good game and i really feel like mario maker was nintendo flat out saying well we fucking can't you you do it now so cause yeah that's mm, legitimately that's how i felt about nintendo for the past 10 years i mm -hmm. feel like they're like oh you like our old stuff you like mario you like zelda you like pokemon Here's more. Like, yeah, that's that's uh, since the Nintendo 64 days. I feel like they haven't done anything innovative outside of the Wiimote, which is a gimmick in my opinion. It's, it's shit. I I hate the Wiimote. So yeah. I, I so, actually I mean, do think it's shit. I'm not just saying that to say it's mediocre, but no, I think the Wiimote is the yep. worst. So I, I completely agree. And then fucking PlayStation tried to copy. Anyways, whatever. Yeah, the and point then everyone is, else is like, oh, like my big problem with that though is like when the Wii did that. People took issue. They're like, eh, the Wii did it. And as soon as PlayStation and fucking Microsoft did similar things to it, everyone was like, it's amazing. And I'm like, fucking, no, it's garbage across the board. Yeah, like, it all sucks. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I'm a, I'm a PlayStation fanboy, and I'll tell you right now, PlayStation moves garbage. But mm. the thing is, like, that's how I feel about all of Nintendo. Like, it's been rehashing, it's been rehashing. Mario Maker is just their final step into fuck it, do it yourself. Like, yeah, it like really... it, oh, you really love Mario? Here's all of Mario. Do whatever yeah. you want. They like, get a lot of their stuff. I, like I felt like in the maybe not ten years, mm -hmm. but actually, yeah, the Wii's been out for a while. Maybe the last ten years. Yeah, pretty much since the Wii has come out, I felt like there hasn't been much from Nintendo that I've really enjoyed. Yeah, the GameCube. There was a lot of good stuff on on there. Uh, GameCube definitely had. I mean, we have Wind Waker. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it gets ignored a lot. It really does. I'm a big fan of the N64. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, really, you like that one. Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. 
uh, I do not like the Wii. Like, whenever I think about the Wii, I can only think of, like, three or four games that I think are good, and that's not good. Uh, yeah. The Wii U, however, with it's introduced a lot of new things to Nintendo and to Nintendo fans that I feel like are, you know, great for the, mm-hmm. for the system. Like, Bayonetta... Mm-hmm. Hyrule Warriors, Splatoon, Wonderful 101. Like, they, like even if you think they're not great games in their own little way, mm-hmm. they're still they they are like new things for Nintendo. And I feel like, and this isn't this is more of an attack on like the Expo because I feel like the Expo doesn't have, have anything to really touch. I, I've had it for a year and I only have four games and I yeah. can barely play them. But I feel like most of the stuff that's on that is like is like the same fucking shit. I am so mm-hmm. sick and tired of like realistic army shooters i'm fucking tired of them Wait, okay when it comes first off for me we we you both garbage in my opinion they have some good isolated games as a console they both pale in comparison to the 3ds oh yeah the 3ds the, is although i feel like i feel like part of that though is because they they don't care about the wii u they're like here's another game for the 3ds it's like stop it <laughs> hey i'm fine with it man i i don't own a wii u i own a 3ds like give me more games like that's how i feel about it yeah but i i get i get the appeal of the wii u you know you have certain things on there that are really good and whatnot and that's fine i mean you know it's it's cool but like legitimately in terms of consoles I, I just I feel like PlayStation's kicking everybody's ass. I agree. I think the PlayStation hasn't. I know, I know that I th- I felt like for about a year though, mm-hmm. the the PlayStation had like nothing on it. Oh yeah, there and, was a good point in time where it was like at bottom tier. Yeah, as of right now though, definitely because yeah. uh, here's how I here's how I feel. I don't care if your console has fucking the greatest specs in the world if you don't have games to play on the console. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Like simple as Agreed. that. Yeah, if your library is weak, then what's the point of having all the good graphics? Yeah, for about a year on each console before they all release. Uh, mm-hmm. w- 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 when they all all released, about a year after they released, all three of the new consoles have been shit. Yeah, the Wii U had nothing on it. The PlayStation had nothing on it, and mm-hmm. the Xbone has very little on it of interest. They it have- has Madden. We all love Madden. They have the Rare Replay, <laughs> and they have a good yeah. Gears of War thing Yay. going on. And I've I've heard from a lot of people that I trust ha- have been saying that the new Halo sh- uh, games have just not been up to par. No, I don't think they have either. So, but PlayStation had Bloodborne, so that's cool with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of AAA games. Like, legitimately, I don't like Assassin's Creed, I don't like Bloodborne, I don't like any sport game. I don't like um, Call of Duties, the Battlefronts, I don't like any any AAA games. I just don't like them, mm-hmm. outside of, like, JRPGs, really. But um, I, I can see the use in Bloodborne, and I think just from this recent E3, what PlayStation announced, just, they... They fucked everybody. They were like, "Oh, we got Final Fantasy VII. We got The Last Guardian. We got every like." Oh yeah, fucking, The Last Guardian. Hell yeah. yeah, they were like, "Oh, we're gonna bring back the things that you love." What's up? Like they just straight up blew everybody out of the damn water. And so, just with those announcements alone, I'm like, "Oh, PlayStation fucking is killing it right now." That's yeah. the kind. Of, the, like in terms of quote unquote triple A games, a lot of the Final Fantasy stuff. I'm down with Kingdom Hearts, my favorite series of all time. Mm-hmm. Like. You know, that's that's kind of where my heart is. Zelda is one thing on Nintendo that I think they fucking are kicking... Uh, well, outside of Twilight Princess, they've always legitimately kicked ass. I just... Yeah, I'm not a huge if you fan. Ever got a, if you ever got a chance to give Splatoon a try... Oh, I absolutely try. would. I so absolutely would. It is... It, it's... It, it, well, there was that Game Rewards... Or uh, Rewards... Awards mm-hmm. show. Uh, it it didn't deserve to win Best Multiplayer. However, I, I, I would give it Best Shooter. That's how I. That's how I see it. So, because it won, I believe it. it it won best multiplayer and it won best shooter. Doesn't deserve best multiplayer, but what does? See, that's the thing is like it's not necessarily that like Splatoon doesn't deserve it and another does deserve it. It's more like mm-hmm. Splatoon is missing so many things vital to a multiplayer experience that the only way that it deserves multiplayer is if all the other competition is absolute shit multiplayer experiences. And if that's the case, then there shouldn't be an award for it. Yeah. Okay, so, that's fair. Yeah, it's. I get you. Yeah, it's really just one of those deals where it's just like it. it there, there should be better stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, I I got you. I mean, personally, 
Uh, I'm not a huge console gamer in general. I am a almost strictly PC gamer, although I'm trying to branch out. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to be strictly console, and then I became strictly PC once I got the really good PC. But um, yeah, yeah. Now, so in terms of video games this year, I've I've been like I haven't fucked with AAA titles. Not a big fan, but I played a lot of Telltale, and mm-hmm. I played a lot of other like uh, Steam primarily games, and my favorite game of the year up until a few months ago was Life is Strange. Mm-hmm. I fucking adore that game. I think it's the first time we've had a really strong female character that wasn't hyper... That's one reason I don't like Bayonetta. Yeah, strong female character. Hyper-sexualized. Yeah. And, like, that, I really, really dislike Bayonetta because that it's like, come on, can't we... Can't she just be badass without, like, getting naked? Like, come the fuck on. Yeah. Like, From my guys understanding, have, and this isn't me defending it, but I thought mm-hmm. that a female directed the games... That doesn't matter. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, okay. I I mean, we, I mean, like I said, that's always been the excuse is like, it's okay because a female... I, that doesn't matter to me. Did it. Like, I get it. Okay, yeah, it's okay because a female did it, but, you know, Ann Coulter's a female. And she, like, if you know, like, okay, I'm not going to get political. Fuck it. <laughs> the point <laughs> is, I don't think that's an excuse, personally. Yeah, that's, I, yeah, that's fair. That's, that's completely fair. So. I... It, do, it does actually bother me in its own little way. Like that's actually one reason why I haven't been, been able to play through it. So mm-hmm. like, it could be the greatest game in the world, but like I don't know. I am bothered by things like that. Like I'm like I don't, I don't want. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I know what you mean. I, I'm personally, I just I'm one of those. I'm one of those pro feminist pro. Like let's get some more strong females in gaming. Let's get some more badass girls that aren't just titties. And that's how I feel Life is Strange is. I'm like, oh my god, Max Caulfield. Chloe's kind of a bitch, but I don't care because she's awesome. And she's voiced by uh, by Ashley Birch, and I love, I just adore Ashley Birch. And so anyways, point is, Life is Strange was my favorite game of the year. Mm. Until Undertale came out. Oh, you're, you're a big fan of Undertale. Holy I haven't touched it yet. Like fuck I said, do I love Undertale. I'm waiting until the hype goes away, and then I'll play it. So then <laughs> Man, I don't have to talk I, to anyone about it. I haven't played it either, and I haven't been spoiled on it, but what I do know is I've seen two isolated Let's Plays of it, both of which were about a half hour long, and I am like, oh my god, this is, it's Earthbound, but more. That's what I've heard. Like, so, so you like it so much that you haven't even got to play it yet. Correct. That from one hour of watching isolated moments completely out of context, I love it. Huh. Like, that's how much I love it. And it's that's insane to say, because I've been through all of Life is Strange. You can go to my uh, channel, Shinjin Gaming, and uh, you can see that, like, <laughs> I played talk. through... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Damn right. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I, uh, like, I, I legitimately love Life is Strange. It was a emotional experience. It was a ride. It was something that I'll probably never forget and never play through again because it was such a ride. Mm. Um... And I don't want to ruin it by, like... Because if I play through it again, it'll be, like, a critical playthrough. I'll be looking at it with, like, critical eye. And uh, I don't want that. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't want to watch... I don't want to play games. I don't want to to watch movies that I really enjoyed when I was younger. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, so... Exactly. But, uh... Yeah, for I mean, and it sounds completely stupid, but from one hour of just watching completely uh, like unrelated, didn't know what the fuck was going on moments in Undertale, I was like, holy shit, this is this is what video games should be. Mm. I fucking love and adore it, and I just I can't wait to get it, into it myself. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll I plan on doing it eventually. I just haven't got the the time to do it yet. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all right. Uh, we've spent a lot of times <laughs> talk, talking about just our 2015. I think we've yeah. done, a, done a decent job. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll try to be quick with this one so that we can spend a lot of time on the review. Uh, yeah. Anything you're looking forward to in 16? Shows, movie, video games? Um, I'm looking forward to Game of Thrones coming back. Love Game of Thrones. Uh, mm-hmm. Looking forward to... Um, Catching up on the new Jirara. If you guys haven't seen it, it's uh, one of my favorite animes of all time. Was the original Jirara. They've recently come out with the sequel this past year, which is something I should have talked about. Uh, haven't seen all of it, but I'm definitely looking forward to catching up on it because I love it so much. Brain Space is awesome. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Game of Thrones, that. The Deadpool movie, it just, I am so hard for that. And then uh, <laughs> my, my body is ready for Suicide Squad. Uh, and I want to see, I want to see Batman be Superman. Not for any reason that 
uh, other people want to see. I want to see how Ben Affleck does and how Jared Leto does and how DC handles a female superhero Mm -hmm. and uh, Civil War just to see what's up with Spider-Man. Yeah, I've been looking forward to Batman v Superman because I actually like Ben Affleck. That's not a popular opinion, but like whenever I saw him jacked in the bat suit, I was like, fuck yeah, because I'm not a fan of the Dark Knight the Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begins. I like uh, the Fletcher. Joker. I like the Joker. <laughs> he's he the did, best thing. Yeah, yeah, he does great. But yeah, he's like the only element of those movies that I really enjoy. I also yeah. kind of like Scarecrow. Yeah, thank you. You are voicing my. I hate Christian Bale. <laughs> like, no, shut the fuck up. Like, but like, I can't stand Christian Bale as a person. But yeah, like as Batman, it was even worse. But when the second. <laughs> When he sounds like he's gargling marbles, there's an issue. Exactly. When he's fucking a rock tumbler in his throat, no. (laughs) I can't tolerate him. But then the second Heath Ledger comes out and he just, oh my God, he has this presence and it's like, you are terrifying. And you want to know how I got these scars? Like, oh my God, dude. I love you. But I am looking forward to the new Batman. Uh, Real quick on Batman. I love the older Batman movies way more. They're so good. The first two were two of the best. Like, Tim Burton did those. And yeah, yeah. And it's funny, I don't like Tim Burton, but I like those. So. Uh, when pe- Yeah, I, I can agree. I don't like Tim Burton nowadays. Uh, Edward Scissorhands is one of my favorite movies of all time. Nightmare for Christmas, he didn't direct. A lot of people don't he, know he that. He produced but, it, though, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, but, like, even more so, I'm starting to think that uh, those original Batman movies, man. Those original uh, Batman, Batman Returns, fucking amazing. I love them. They are a little but, bit dated, but I love them. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't care how dated they are. I will love them till the end of time. Uh, games or, or television that you're looking for forward to? Uh, television, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I need to watch Ash vs Evil Dead. I'm totally down for that. Totally down for Game of Thrones to come back. Uh, I need to catch up on Agents of Shield. Saw the first half of the first season. Haven't caught up yet. I did uh, not get into that. I, yeah, I couldn't because again, I love Joss Whedon, but man, that's one where I was like, "Ooh, I'm not, yeah, not feeling this." The, I hear the, it gets so much better though. I liked the first episode, but that the second episode to me was so bad. I mm-hmm. was like, I I think my I I didn't like actively say I'm not going to watch this anymore, but I think my mind was just like, "You're not going to watch this anymore," yeah, and, like stopped me from ever going back to it. So yeah. I, I got a little bit further in, like halfway through, and I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I just, it, it didn't stick with me, man. I didn't, I, but I hear like season two is fucking amazing and things get better when Joss Wing comes back because he was working on Age of Ultron. He came back and he took the helm and he fucking rocked it. That's why I hear. So I'm going to give it a chance just because Joss Wing's my shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, you're right. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get past the first half, man. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't in me to do it. Uh, movies? Or not movies, sorry. Uh, games. Uh, games that are coming out. I really want to play Fallout 4. I, I mean, I haven't had a chance to. I've watched a lot of people play it. Mm-hmm. But I want I want to get into it. Uh, what other games? Anything Telltale that's coming out? The Michonne game? I don't know if that's come out yet. But mm-hmm. I know they are make- They might be making a sequel to uh, to uh, The Wolf Among Us and all these other things. I'm down for anything Telltale has to do. I'm down for any indie games, man. I want to see these indie developers flourish. I'm loving it. Cuphead. Uh, hmm? Cuphead. I think it's coming out just on Xbox One, but... It's it's I'm looking forward to it. Cuphead. What 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 is that? It's like a. It's gonna be a 2D platformer, uh-huh. and it's drawn in like the style of like the early 1920s 1930s like cartoons. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like visually astounding. That sounds kind of amazing. Yeah, whether or not it'll actually be good, mm. at the very least, you'll be like, this is beautiful. So yeah, uh, but it is gonna be Xbox One exclusive, from my understanding. Mm. I'm uh, glad I have an Xbox. I yeah, guess. <laughs> for that particular reason. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, I mean, um, everything from E3, Kingdom Hearts three, if it ever comes out, Last Guardian, <laughs> it, it Final Fantasy, literally will not come out. Yeah. God damn it. I, like I said, my favorite series of all time. I just, I'm just waiting. Yeah, I love two. But that's mm. that. We'll talk about more of those later on. Uh, yeah. Movies for me. A lot of the ones that you mentioned, I'm, I didn't care for the Deadpool movie for a while because I was tired of talking to the fans of it. <laughs> But now I'm looking forward to it because mm-hmm. I was, I, I mean, my thing is everyone was like, it has to be rated R. And then I was like, no, it doesn't. And then it turned out that it was rated R anyways. And I was like, all right, that's cool. But it, there's so many like good movies out there mm-hmm. that are PG-13. And just because in the comic books, it's bloody doesn't mean it doesn't have to be that way. Like 
you can make a good movie without being entirely faithful. Just saying. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, he was... Uh, the quick... Real quick, Wolverine vs. Hulk, it was a uh, animated movie that came out. Fantastic. Uh, Deadpool was in it. They did him right. It was what? It was PG, and they did him fucking phenomenally. Yeah, he cut off his arm, and he's like sitting there trying to put it back on. Yeah. That, yeah, see, now that, that's exactly what I was saying. And, I, and I, there's a lot of Deadpool stuff that is like... It's good, and it doesn't need to be incredibly cussy or mm-hmm. stuff like that. And yeah, I, I I thought of this thing: if they would have just like you could literally censor Deadpool, mm-hmm. and he could make fun of that. Yeah, but, like you could like you could bleep him out, and he'd be like, "What the fuck?" And like you know, like be yeah. upset with it. He could that would have been funny, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, Reddit R. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, it's for me. It's better that it's rated R, just because it's something we haven't seen yeah. since. But what, what the crow? Like, uh, what, was that Blade. even rated R? Oh, Blade. Okay, Blade. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe the Watchmen. That might have been rated R. But um, yeah, I think so actually. Which I personally love. People are like, oh, fuck Zack Snyder. I don't care. Watchmen was great. But Zach yeah, Snyder's... fuck Zack Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100 percent on the fuck Zack Snyder train, but <laughs> I like the Watchmen. I think it did the comic justice, and they changed things that needed to be changed. Anyways, point is, uh, I'm down for it being R. That's why I felt like it needed. Uh, it didn't have to be that way. I would have been fine with PG-13, but I'm glad that it was R because I feel like they can do it the most justice that way. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool. I I'm actually looking forward to Batman vs Superman. I wasn't at first. I was like, mm-hmm. eh, I feel like in this realistic realm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they're wanting to give to us uh, of this realistic realm in DC. How are they supposed to convince us that Batman could possibly defeat Superman? Is that possible? No, it's not. So uh, that that was my only issue with it. I'm looking forward to a little bit more now. Uh, God's not dead too. I'm just kidding. I'm not <laughs> interested in that at all. Uh, the Jungle Book, uh, the live action movie. It's from my understanding. Watch the trailer, and then realize this it's all cgi yep but it doesn't look cgi it no lo- it looks good yeah it look like all the sets everything is cgi it mm-hmm. looks amazing uh very life of pie ish yeah oh yeah yeah definitely uh ratchet and clank i'm not looking forward to it but it's notable uh mm-hmm. i i'm actually looking forward to because the trailers have been funny but kung fu panda 3 I've seen the first one. I liked it. Yeah, they're good. I don't think anyone yeah. wants to admit that they're good, though, because... They're underrated. It's Jack Black. <laughs> no one yeah. like, what Yeah. Uh, Captain America Civil War. Uh, uh, I... Mm. Are, you not, are you not down with it? I'll, okay, I'm one of those guys that read the Civil War comics, and I'm okay. like, you guys can't do it. You can't make it... Like, why did you have to... I understand what you're going for. Mm-hmm. Why'd you have to call it Civil War? Because yeah. it's not going to be Civil War. It's just not. Like, you can't do it. I feel like you couldn't. Like here, well, now let's put let's put this on the opposite train. Let's say that trailer comes out and it's just called Captain America Three, mm-hmm. and it's clearly Tony Stark fighting Captain America. Everyone would be complaining. Why isn't it called Civil War then? Mm-hmm. So it's. No, I, I get that. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I I see where they're coming from. I just. There's not enough characters. I feel like they're not going to get enough screen time, and not enough good stuff's going to happen. And I don't know. I I have very little hope for it because I want it to be good. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it'll. I, I Winter Soldier is my favorite Marvel uh, movie. <laughs> I've tried watching it three times and fell asleep each time. Are you fucking serious? Wow! Swear wow. to God. God, one one episode of this podcast and then we're done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's over. <laughs> uh, as X Men Apocalypse, it looks all right. <laughs> I, I like Days of Future Past. It wasn't great, in my opinion, but I liked it. So I, I really love uh, James McAvoy as uh, Professor X. I, I don't mind him as Professor X. It, Ever it, since X Two, I've hated every X Men movie. Oh, really? Every but like not just like oh I didn't like that it wasn't very good. I viscerally despised them. What about First Class? Hate it. What the fuck? Oh, it's so good. I uh, feel like it's a waste of time. Uh, I okay. I'm only saying this one because I was surprised by the first one. Like I thought it was gonna be shit, and it wasn't absolute shit. It wasn't great, mm-hmm. but it wasn't shit. But the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. You know, uh, the first one had that that elevator moment, which yeah. redeemed it a lot. Like it, a lot of good came from that damn elevator I, moment. I wasn't gonna watch the movie until I saw that clip. 
And yeah. that was the clip that I was like, I have to see this movie. Ninja Turtles. Like Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles was like my life growing me up. Me too. So I'm big on them. Uh, mm-hmm. Now you see me too. Uh, what else is here? I'm just going through the list. I'm actually looking forward to the female uh, led Ghostbusters movie. Yeah, oh yeah, me People too. People are giving it too much unnecessary backlash. Uh, oh, they weren't girls in the original. Shut the fuck up. I know. Like, <laughs> I could kick you in the dick. Uh, yeah. Suicide Squad. I think Suicide Squad could be DC's first really good movie. I don't think Batman v Superman is going to be great. No. I think no. Suicide Squad is going to be amazing. I feel the exact same way. I feel like if any DC movie has the potential to hit Marvel where it hurts and get some of that their Marvel money, mm-hmm. it is Suicide Squad. Um, it's been going through production hell, but maybe this one will be good because I've wanted it for all my life. Gambit. <sighs> Man, I okay. I have faith, but I it's going through like the worst development. And the last I, time that happened, we got Fantastic Four. So I, I have three favorite uh, mutants in in besides Deadpool. Deadpool's like I don't consider him mutant. I consider him other shit. But we should say them at the same time. They're probably the same. But no, maybe you go ahead. Gambit, Psylocke, Nightcrawler. All right. Not Rogue Psylocke. is a very close four. Uh, but I, Gambit, Nightcrawler, and I'm at, I hate to say this because I feel like it's the go-to one, but I love Wolverine. I've always loved. No, Wolverine. that's fair. But that, yeah, Nightcrawler, Gambit, and and Wolverine have always been my favorite. I, I love Psylocke because she's a knockoff of my favorite DC character, Raven from Teen Titans. Mm, um, yeah. They have very similar storylines. If you didn't know that, but uh, yeah, the the thing is, I feel like. With the exception of Nightcrawler, because Alan Cumming was great, they have fucked over all of my favorites. I haven't even seen the new X-Men movie, and I hate it, because Olivia Munn is Psylocke, and I can't stand her as a human being or as an actress. Yeah. I cannot tolerate her existence. I would prefer her not be in my line of vision ever again. But no, they they made her my favorite female mutant. Cool. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe she'll knock it out of the park. So no, no, she won't. <laughs> Even if she does, I won't like it. Even if she's the best Psylocke ever, I hate her that much. Yeah, I just uh, can't stand her. What else we got? Doctor Strange. Okay, yeah, I'm down with it. I'm looking batch. forward to that one. I'm not looking forward to this one as much, but I'll, I'm still going to see it. The Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Uh, the, the Potter. Uh, yeah, I okay. I'll be honest. I love the first two Harry Potter movies with a passion, probably mm-hmm. because I was young. And mm. they like it brought me into this world, this magical world and stuff like that. And then mm. as it went on, and eventually I got to see uh, Emma Watson's pussy because it got revealed in that one thing. The movies have just been ruined for me. I Wait, what? There, there's a picture where she's like getting out of a car and her fluff mutton is showing. Oh, that upsets me. Yeah. I mean, you it, know. It happened I... right before the sixth movie came out, I think. Mm. And I was like, well, I fucking, I can't. That's not her fault, I don't think, but... I like, might have been. I doubt it. Like, knowing the work she does for He For She and, like, seemingly who she is, mm-hmm. I have a lot of respect for her, yeah. which is why that's upsetting to me, because it feels like... Uh, it doesn't feel like something she would do. Maybe it is, but it feels like the there's a higher probability that someone saw an advantage and took advantage of it. Yeah, and possibly. That, that pisses me off. It feels like she was the victim of somebody being a cunt. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last... One that I'll mention, and this will mm. actually be a pretty good segue into what we're what, what we're going to talk about for the next hour or so. Mm. I've been losing track of time, not going to lie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars Rogue One. Do man. I am. Depends. I mean, it could be shit. It could be. However, uh, th- this is how I feel about it. Mm. The other, I think, announced Star Wars spinoff movies have been a Han Solo prequel type deal and a Boba Fett prequel type deal. I don't want those. Like no, that, me either. That's cool, but I want, like... That's an entire galaxy of characters that, like, we could get to know. We could have Jedi stories. We could have all these, like... We, we could see, like, these actual Star Wars, the big wars and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, this wh- is what hmm. we're getting with this one. <laughs> when it comes to Boba Fett, I... Can, I've I've looked I've looked everywhere and I cannot find a fuck to give about him like I, at all. Well, we can go into it when we talk about Force Awakens, but okay. I I agree. Mm-hmm. I do not like Boba Fett. I mean, nope. I, th- but that's all, at the same time. Here's the deal. I don't not like Boba Fett. I just yeah. don't care. 
I nothing him. Yeah, like, that's uh, just whatever, dude. Cool, you look cool. Yeah. Uh, there's a few other ones that might come out this year or mm-hmm. ne- next year. Uh, well, 2016 this year. Uh, right. Devil May Cry movie. Mm. Uh, that's it. But yeah, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about Star Wars. We, I had you watch the movie last night. Yes. Uh, spoilers, just for anyone who knows. But if you haven't seen Star Wars yet, you, why are you even watching? Go, go, just go, dude. Go watch it, please. <laughs> just uh, so you, yeah, oh, man. But okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. Uh, before we get into like hardcore details, what was your general impressions of it? I only saw it last night. All right. And I am very critical of everything. Yeah. But that being said, it is critically, in my opinion probably the second best Star Wars movie ever made. <gasps> in terms of being a, a star... Like, in terms of, like, how I personally feel about it, it's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, could, I could see. I, I, I really do. I, I, it's been getting... A, it, not getting a lot of hate, but the people who do not like the movie are very vocal about, yeah. the, about it. And I don't think it deserves what it's been getting hate for. No. Uh, so, yeah. I, all, all these people who... First off, I just hate the term like SJW and seeing all that. Like, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong in my opinion for wanting for you know there to be equality and stuff like that. So many people, I see these people are like, there has to be a girl and the and a black guy as the main characters of the movies because that's the kind of society we live in now. It's like, yeah, sorry, fucking like yeah, that's literally fucking, there are multiple races and genders. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, if that's an issue with with like you know. If that's an issue that you really have, that you literally actually have, why do you go outside? Like, things are like, changed, Grandma. Please. Legitimately, like, here's how I feel about it, and I know this is being uh, posted on your channel. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to be as nice about this as possible. But if you have a problem with um, with female leads or with uh, people of races that are not white uh, being leads, and you think that it's catering to whatever... Uh, don't don't watch any of my stuff because I don't want you as a fan. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm I'm kind of. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, honestly, I, I the people with the issues with that kind of stuff have been has really been bothering me. Uh, but away from all the politicalness of it, right? You think it's the second best Star Wars movie? Critically, yes. Okay. All right. I can. I I see where you're coming from. Mm. I would maybe put it at, at number four. Not necessarily in the order that everyone thinks it is. I, I, I think people were a little bit too hard on Episode Three, but Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, just a little bit too hard. It's good. Okay. It really is. Like I, I think if you watch it, not ne- not necessarily in a turn your brain off type of way, but like I don't know. I think people were looking for too many things to be anal about that movie because I, I love with a passion. Episode one. I don't think it's good, but I love it. I, I there's so many things about it that I absolutely just love. Episode two, on the other hand, is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. No, it's terrible. And I could understand that coming off of that with episode three, you know, you want to find more things to hate. And I don't think that there are that many things to hate with that film. So I would actually put Force Awakens maybe behind that film. But at the same uh. time, I don't want to like really that's that's not my official standing. Okay. And then I would put like like I, I think it goes Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, mm-hmm. maybe Episode Three, maybe Episode Seven, and then Episode Six, and then the the other two. They're kind of they're kind of equally bad, but really, I mean, Episode One and Two are not good. They're just like they have. Episode One's better. There we go. I'll just yeah. say it like the Episode One has a lot of good elements to it. That well get overlooked but let me let me tell you th- just my quick stance on the prequels okay. uh they are th- some of the worst things that have ever happened to star wars um that's my personal opinion mm-hmm. and i think there are only five or six redeeming factors uh those being darth maul in my opinion was one of the scariest sons of bitches and probably the best villain uh, well definitely the best villain throughout the prequels but yeah. uh he he was completely underutilized. People have said it before. I feel like he should have been the main thing. Like that he should have been Obi Wan's Darth Vader. Like I, that's what I, he should have been. I agree actually. I think I think it was a waste to kill him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Natalie Portman, I am in love with. Uh, yes. Uh, so her being in a thing makes me happy. Um, the Emperor, they brought him back from the original uh, series. Mm -hmm. uh, from the, uh, you know, episodes four, five, and six, which I fucking refuse to call him that. But anyways, uh, they brought him back and he was phenomenal. He did yeah. a great job. The Emperor's fucking great. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's see, pod racing was kind of cool. I love the I, pod I, racing. Yeah, I didn't hate it. Didn't hate it. Um, let's see here. What was the... Uh, oh, uh, Ewan McGregor as oh, Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah, he's Perfect. amazing. Perfect casting. Yeah, and I also... Like, I know Qui-Gon Jinn gets a lot of shit, but I, I love Qui-Gon Jinn. I don't hate him at all. Like, like, I don't have a problem with him. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I understand why. Cause people are like, he's a boring character. It's like, well, the mm. Jedi are boring characters. They're supposed to be. Yeah, that's very true. But that doesn't change the fact that he is... Mm -hmm. a boring character so yeah i mean he's basically uh you know uh ben kenobi 2.0 yeah and that's fine it's whatever i don't mind uh that but i mean aside from that i can't uh well and the fighting got better the you know because if you watch the first star wars it's like i could whip those guys ass. yeah like, a, new, a new hope does not have very <laughs> no. like that's like my only real big problem with the new hope is mm -hmm. that lightsaber fight at the end yeah it's not good um where they gingerly touch tips you know yeah yeah <laughs> Just like we did 30 minutes into this episode. <laughs> uh, the, like, people also rag, they rag on the lightsaber fights all the time. They're like, oh, they're choreographed and poo-poo and whatnot. But the way that I've always seen it is that's, like, back when Jedi were, like, super trained and stuff like that. Yeah. And they, there was a Jedi Academy. Yeah, like, mm. they could do that because, like, they, they were that trained, while as Luke... Uh, w wasn't very well trained, and yeah. Darth Vader was hurt. Like he's a, he's a robot, you know. So like, yeah. that's how it had to be. That's how I, I would get justify it through canon, I guess. No, yeah, I get that, and that's fine. Uh, aside from that, though, I honestly I can't find a redeeming factor because everybody else is acting, and it's not uh Chri Christian Christian uh, cardboard, whatever the fuck his name was. Hey, he can't. Too? Yeah, that one. He uh he can act. Dude was in Jumper and it was cool and like he's he's fine. Like yeah. he's a good actor. Well, here's my deal. Uh next time you watch those movies, if you do, just think anytime that he has to say something, just think, could I say that better? Cuz that's the thing. I don't think like he's a bad actor in those movies at all, really. I think it's the script. I don't think it's even I think it's part script, part directing. Yeah. Definitely, because like it, it just there's certain things that I'm just like I couldn't say that better. I'm not a very yeah. good actor, but like I don't think you could get many people to say th these lines better. So I feel like I could probably say some of his lines better, possibly legitimately, because I went through a lot of different acting classes and stuff. So I feel like I could draw from a place where like I could kind of relate to what he's going through and maybe say them better. But again. It's not that I don't think he couldn't say them better. It's that he was directed to say them specifically that way. Yeah. Oh, boy. So instead of reviewing The Force Awakens, we just start talking about it. Yeah. All right. Force Awakens. Whew. Yep. Let's just, let's just attack. Let's, let's attack it first. Since okay. we're talking about bad things in Star Wars. What, what did you have problems with? If anything. Uh, how? Okay. Ray is my favorite character in star wars Officially. Uh, yeah okay my favorite uh, my favorite hero uh, is ray mm -hmm. and she uh she had like the force call to her and she went to luke's saber okay this wasn't explained i'm sure it will be explained but she heard voices and saw visions and stuff mm -hmm. the only two things that i can think of three things is that the force is so strong with her that it did that which sounds like bullshit mm -hmm. uh and i completely discredit that or she's uh related to luke and she's having memories that he was having, like, not necessarily by blood, yeah. but in some other way is related to Luke and was having memories that he was having. Or she uh, has a bunch of repressed memories and was either his daughter or was in the Academy when Kylo did all that shit. And so those are her memories coming back. Yeah, I think she's repressed, to be honest with yeah. you. Uh, I think that's that's one of the deals that's going to go on. Exactly. No. I, I, I do think I could be wrong, though. I, I think we might get some answers in Rogue One, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think... That she's she's either Luke's daughter or she's got to be someone in Rogue One's daughter, right? Or, or she, she's related to Obi Wan Kenobi. But yeah, she uh, there's a lot. Of, yeah, or the other thing which I think would be better, but is also because I'm tired of everybody being goddamn related to everybody. I agree. Is that <laughs> I think she 
I think that she could have been one of the potential Jedi's that was there when Kylo was like, oh, fucking kill the younglings and shit. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another thing that she could have been there when that happened. And then Luke was like, you will not remember this and like dropped her ass off somewhere. Yeah. So, cause like, you know, even like, like Kylo knew of the, there's like those times where he talks about like what girl and stuff like that. Like he knows yeah. of her. Yeah. He totally does. Yeah. So, and the, the problem that I have with Ray, the only problem that I have with Ray is she knows the Force way too goddamn well. Mm-hmm. The, immediately, she was like, I wonder if I could get this Stormtrooper to let me go. Yep, can do it. How would you... Okay, yeah, the exactly. Force might... The it, Force could be strong as fuck with you. How would you know that that was even a possibility? Yeah. Like, I, I think you're right. Uh, you got it right on how it's like she's repressed somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and although... Now, now here's here's something that I get into a lot when I, when I talk about my issues. People are all like, well, maybe we'll find out in the next movie. We don't know that. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't know that they're going to reveal things in the next movie. We don't know that they're going to like change things up. Mm-hmm. We don't know that. They might keep it a fucking mystery until the series is over. They might never tell us how she Agreed. suddenly knows the Force. Now, one explanation for how she knows the Force, in my opinion, something I thought of was, what if the lightsaber was calling to her? Because let's say she's related to Luke or whatever. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, fucking, we're calling to my blood, essentially. And she goes there, and when she grabs the lightsaber, like, a bunch of stuff was happening, right? And she was going through all this other shit. Mm-hmm. What if some of the stuff that she saw was what Luke had gone through? So she saw Obi-Wan talking to the damn stormtroopers from A New Hope. Yeah. And she was, and that's how she knew how to do it. Yeah, possibly. It's all conjecture for now. Yeah, uh. exactly. <laughs> so I think it's explainable, but the fact that they didn't fucking show any clips like that, didn't mm-hmm. try to explain it, kind of, and then... Like, also, Kylo Ren, this motherfucker's been training under the fucking Andy Circus for, like, ever, and he's, th- okay, he's super good at, like, using the Force and blah, 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 and I understand he was hurt when he was fighting Rey, uh, but how does Rey know how to use the lightsaber as well as she did? How does she know how to use the Force as well as she did? And more importantly than any of that, how the fuck does Finn know how to use the lightsaber? Uh, I think the thing with Finn, because the thing mm. is, Finn got his ass kicked. Uh, yeah, but he still held him off. yeah. We get that scene where the stormtrooper fights with the mm-hmm. one weapon, you know? Right, with the big uh, mace thing, and that he could have been trained in that. Right? Yeah, that's my that's my idea. I could be wrong though, and honestly, mm-hmm. I think I am. I hope I'm not, but but I, I think that he yeah. may have been trained a little bit in that. So, I mean, that. in my opinion, or I'm not noticing my opinion, but like you don't need to like be trained in the Force to use a lightsaber. It's I agree. Like using a sword, and the thing is, it's it's good. Like, because I, I believe... I've seen the movie twice now. Uh-huh. Whenever he's fighting Kylo Ren and the Stormtrooper, I think he's on on the defensive almost the entire time. Yeah, Which that's true. I think you could do better if you weren't trained with it. I think you could be more defensive. Whereas Kylo Ren is, like, all up in his ass. So... Yeah. That, but, I mean, he did... He cut Kylo Ren's shoulder. Yeah, so he... he man, he was able to do a little bit. But I don't see it happening, though. Yeah, I, I don't see it happening. There was a little bit too much of like this is an issue I have I have with all of Star Wars though. Mm. Too much shit is like just luck based, where it's like oh yes. that's lucky and oh that's like in mm-hmm. the original trilogy they sort of can explain it with the Force. Yeah, with this, I, it's going to be explained hopefully in the next movie. We can't mm-hmm. be guaranteed that that's true though. Right. Yeah, that's uh okay. So my yeah I, I yeah I mean I hope it gets explained my. My main issues are that, first off, Finn could do anything against Kylo Ren, because that's like Han Solo fighting Darth Vader. He'd, get his, he'd just die, like, yeah. legitimately. Um, the other thing is that Rey knows way too much about the Force, way too quick with no training. At least Luke went through, like, they even showed uh, when Finn was on the Millennium Falcon with Rey, they, he touched the thing and the little chest thing came up, and then he had the ball that Luke was, like, you know, yeah. training against. Like, those were all great little, uh, great little callbacks that fit in the plot. It wasn't, like shoehorned in it like that fit and it was great and but like that just goes to remind you that oh yeah luke trained didn't he a bunch with obi-wan and he trained against the ball thing ray didn't do any of that sure yeah. she could use his staff okay that's cool like by the but, by the time that he luke takes on darth vader he's been trained exactly and like the, kylo we, ren is this universe is darth vader yeah we have this assumption that Ky- kylo ren is like okay I actually, I, I really love Kylo Ren, which we'll talk about in our positives, but I love right. Kylo Ren. And 
one reason why I love him is is because he's not great. You know, it doesn't seem like mm-hmm. he's actually that that good. I think he's really good with the force, but I don't think he's that good with the lightsaber. Um, so far, so as we've seen. But yeah, mm-hmm. you hit it right on the right on the head with uh, that. Even though we'll talk, the the fight scene at the end or whatnot is, in my opinion, one of the best scenes in all of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I I couldn't let it go. I was like, oh my fucking god, no! Like Jedi yeah. train with these all the time, and how is she able? Like how much training has Kylo Ren not gotten? Like. Yeah. Like, I don't know. but <laughs> Yeah, like when Andy Serkis was like, oh, bring him to me. It's time for the final step of his training. I'm like, oh, is that final step teaching him how to be a fucking Jedi? Yeah, like, or is teaching he... him how to be a Sith? Is, it, is the final step teaching him anything? Yeah. Is he going to be good in the next yeah. book? Like, <laughs> will he not suck dick, apparently? <laughs> like, Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt. And then, but, like, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense, when the lightsaber went to Rey, I was fucking screaming i was so happy oh really i was like oh that was my favorite scene See, that was my moment the first time i watched that i was like eh. i was pissed because i felt i knew it was coming my I, yeah my, my problem with it one was like oh so she's attuned with the force now like she just knows yeah. how all the force works yeah that's true uh but that's how i felt with the for, the very first thing she did was be like stormtrooper let me go yeah like Wait. that seems like some advanced shit right there yeah exactly i mean i'm, I'm, I'm exactly in the same boat the mm-hmm. second time, however, watching that, I got fucking chills as it was happening, and I was like, "Yeah, this is actually really good." The first time, though, it was bothering the hell out of me. I was like, "This, no, stop! <laughs> it's no, not stop that. Are you serious? Like, <laughs> just make her run up and grab it. It doesn't have to be this way." Uh, I I get it, but I because lo- like that's the thing. She's more in tune with the force, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Like Kylo was like, "Oh, fucking the shit is strong in you." Like yeah. that's. You know, so I mean, it makes sense. That part makes sense mm-hmm. because, like, to me, the force has always been about like forcing shit, like, yeah. like telepathy, essentially. Yeah. Like, so anything in that realm, I think, if it's like a telepathy style thing, it makes sense because it's like, okay, that's kind of innate. Mm-hmm. Like, that's innate force stuff. Whereas, like, the fucking these are not the droids you're looking for. That shit's more like something I feel like you'd have to learn. Yeah, and the only time that we ever really see that in the uh, like work within mm-hmm. the movies and stuff like that is Obi-Wan. Right, yes. So, uh, well, no, that's not true. When Luke goes to, uh, to, when he's all dressed in black and he has the cloak on and shit. Mm-hmm. And he, I think oh, he, he talks to, to the one person. He gets the one person to do it. Yeah, he's like, back your balls off. And the guy's like, okay. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that was fine. Uh, yeah, he, chokes, no. he chokes the two pig guys and then he's like, hey, I want to talk to Jabba. And then one guy's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, cool, go get the slug. But Obi-Wan, and then, Obi-Wan does it in the movies. Or in the movies, duh. He does it in <laughs> uh, A New Hope, and I think he does it in uh, episode two and three. So Okay, uh, that's fine. Any any other uh, problems with the, that oh, you have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, we did not get enough Poe. I agree. Actually, I, uh, love po. I think that's because now... This does not change the fact that we did not get enough. It's just mm-hmm. the reason why we did not get enough. Uh, his the original plan for him, I believe, was that whenever he falls into Jakku, he's yeah. dead. He was supposed to be dead. They ha- I'm glad he didn't kill him. Yeah, they had not planned for him to come back. However, I I, I guess whenever they did that they did that rewrite and they had him come back or whatnot, mm. wasn't that wasn't good. Like I was like, and then, like they they go over it like and, like. They give it 20, not even 20 seconds. They give it 10 seconds to explain what happened to him. Yeah. And I was like, that's not enough. No, fucking. Because when Finn and Poe were together mm-hmm. in that beginning scene or whatnot, that it's amazing. Like Finn, yeah. uh, what guy, what's his name? Uh, anyways, the guy who plays Finn, John Boyega, mm-hmm. him with everyone else was amazing. Yes. I, I felt like any scene with him talking to other people was fantastic i feel like he stole the show i loved ray i really did i think mm. i'm pretty much on board with with her being one of my favorite characters now but especially yeah. finn and poe amazing finn together. and poe is so fucking phenomenal i, was I agree like, i was like i want more i want more of these people yeah. i'm no i'm right there with you i i feel like uh they could have definitely explained poe some more come on man he was like right off the bat the old man's like, get the fuck up out of here. And he realizes he can't because his shit got fucked up. So he's like, BB-8, get shit and go. Yeah. So he sends off BB-8. Then he has that fucking badass moment. He sh- The blaster gets shot. Kylo Ren, right off the bat, is like, nope. Yeah. Force he's stops a, a blaster. Fucking, like, they... 
within the first scene of Kylo Ren being in there, they mm-hmm. established that this guy could potentially be a badass. Like is the business, yeah, yeah. Like that's how I felt. It, Kylo Ren is the best parts of Darth Maul and Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. He has the Force aspect of Darth Vader, and then he has the lightsaber aspect of Darth Maul. He's a way better lightsaber fighter than Darth Vader. It looks like, but yeah. N- yeah, but not as good as Darth Maul. And he's a way better Force user than Darth Maul, but not as good as Darth Vader. He's, he's so a perfect middle point. of a lightsaber user that Rey beats him. Yeah. <laughs> but I do. I, I think that he will be legit, like really legit in the, ne- in yeah. the next film. I agree. Uh, but, which but, I'm okay with him sucking ass right now because... Uh-huh. Uh, like Luke in the first film is a bitch, like yeah, and then he evolves. Yeah. Like, it's a character arc, and I'm okay with Kylo mm-hmm. Ren being a little shit right now, because yeah. I won't be okay if he's never a badass. But they're I I have faith that they're going to make him a badass. They have to. Right. I just hope he doesn't turn good. I am the exact same way. Even Heather's like uh, I'm so sick of Disney Disneying things. And, yeah, they need to stop Disneying things. You're, yeah, that's hundred percent. Um, but. Right off the bat, though, with that Poe thing, uh, he, 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 he shoots the blaster, and Kylo Ren's like, nope, and then fucking, he, you see how badass Kylo Ren is, and he grabs, he's like, get that motherfucker, so they bring over Poe, and they're both quiet for a second, and then Poe just, he saw how badass Kylo Ren is, and he's like, so, uh, do yeah. you start talking, or first? do I start? Yeah, that, I was like, oh my god, I love this guy! <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, that shows how fucking awesome he is. Yeah, Poe, like I said, uh... Maybe it was Poe that I liked. <laughs> uh, I I wanted more of him though. To be honest with you, yeah, uh, I, I was I was perfectly okay with uh, him disappearing for a while and coming back. But I, the thing is, is that I thought one they were going to explain more why he came back, and yeah. two, this is my big issue. Like this is my biggest issue. Uh-huh. I'm perfectly fine with them mimicking a New Hope in a lot of ways. They need to find a droid because the droid is carrying some sort of like plans or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then at the and end, the Death Star, yeah. yeah. Then at the end, they blow up a fucking Death Star. Mm-hmm. And then the old man dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way that they built up to the Death Star in A New Hope is, in my opinion, some of the best work, like best film that you can ever do because it's a mm-hmm. slow build. In this film, stuff is always happening. So by yeah. the time that we got to the end, where we had Poe back and stuff like that, I forgot that they were trying to blow up this planet because there was too much going on. And mm. even though they were like, here's the Death Star, but here's this other thing. It's a lot bigger. Look mm. how much bigger this is. Ha 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 ha. That yeah, didn't make... Just, it didn't feel the like Death the Star. stakes were bigger. No, no. What it should have been is Kylo Ren and... Uh, excuse me. And the First Order just chasing down uh, Finn and Rey and just showing how powerful they are by strong We didn't need another Death Star. Exactly. We, uh, somebody else brought this up in another thing that I watched, but um, the Death Star in the first one was impactful because it they used it as an interrogation technique and destroyed Leia's home planet mm-hmm. in front of her. Like, that was phenomenal. Yeah, this one they we were did like, not need a third Death Star. Yeah, this one they were like, let's just take out some planets. No one cares yeah, about these planets. Random though. bullshit planets. Yeah, who the fuck cares? It would have been cool if they took out the Gungan planet, like just to be like, yeah, see, yeah. But uh, yeah, aside, there's no need for that. It should have just been. Look at how strong the First Order is. Look at Kylo Ren by himself taking out the rebellion. Like it should have been this. Holy fuck, I'm terrified of this guy and the people that like are, are under him type thing. Instead of like, oh look, another Death Star. Yeah, I but, just I just feel like the destroying the Death Star thing. See, I was I was okay with them mimicking it for the most part, except mm-hmm. for it didn't feel big. It didn't feel like it mattered. It didn't feel like there was any like really nope. like consequences. Whereas that like the the when they destroyed the actual Death Star, like it felt like shit was going down. This yeah. one, I think this all has to do with the whole entire Harrison Ford. Like, like all, like Ooh. basically all the inward stuff of of it, uh, like with the the, the sword fight and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There's the part where Finn is fighting. He gets his ass beat, and then they go back to the Death Star, or mm-hmm. they go back to de- to destroying the Death Star or whatnot. I fucking forgot that they were doing that. Yeah, because of how much we did not see of it, and by the time that they went back to destroying it, I was like, oh shit, it, this is happening. I forgot. I. I didn't mm-hmm. care because yeah, everything else in the film is good. Like, like it felt like everything, like you could have not had that base or whatnot. They could have just destroyed the base and called it good or something like that. Mm. 
But like everything, like when they went back to the, they're all like, and Poe shows up again. And he's like, "Hey, look, guys, I'm fucking blowing up this shit." I was like, "I don't, I don't care." Like, like I love you, Poe, but stop. Yeah, just just because this thing's bigger doesn't mean it felt bigger. Yeah, I agree. So. It's a hundred percent. They could completely done without it and had Poe do other awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like yeah, no, it's, it was in my opinion, it was a waste. But the thing is. This is this is just this is a bigger, grander new hope for a new generation. So of course it's gonna mirror it very closely. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it did better. And my reasoning behind this, a lot of people are gonna be like, oh no, new hope. No, take off nostalgia glasses and just hear me out on this. The the Mark Hamill, uh, he was a bad actor. Like legitimately in New Hope, he wasn't good. Yeah. He and Harrison Ford, he, dude was like a carpenter on set or something when they got him. Like, okay, he was a, he was good in the part, but that's because he was playing Harrison Ford. Yeah. That's how I constantly feel about Harrison Ford is I hate him as an actor. That's, that's because, how uh, Will Ferrell is for me. I can't. Yeah, that's fine. I get it because he's just Will Ferrell. I get it. And like Harrison Ford in... Uh, Star Wars, he was just Harrison Ford in his 20s. Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones was Harrison Ford in his 30s if he were uh, if he were a fucking whatever that's called. Have you seen um, Have you seen Blade Runner? It, that's exactly what I was getting to. The only two movies that he's ever acted in, in my opinion, were The Fugitive and Blade Runner. Mm, okay. That's it. Uh, other than that, he's just Harrison Ford. Uh, Air Force One's Harrison Ford on a plane. Like, it's it, Crystal Skull, he straight up phoned it in. This movie yeah. is the first movie since The Fugitive I felt like he's acted. Yeah, there were the thing with me on this one is there was just some facial like the the parts where he wasn't talking, mm-hmm. where you could just see his like body movement. Where, where it was mm-hmm. where I was like, that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was I, I was all down for that. I honestly didn't mind like I. I don't like Harrison Ford because the way he's like, oh, I don't care about the roles I've done and I don't care about my fans. And dude, the only reason you have money, the only reason you have a career is because of the roles you've done in your fans. I, like, I, I, I'm the exact same way. It, it is know, heartbreaking to see someone that you in a way idolize on screen be yeah. like, oh, I don't care. It's like, but you should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you should just yeah. a little bit, you know? Exactly. Like, like, I'm not saying nerd out over it and know how many fucking parsecs and this. Don't, like, that doesn't, just don't be a dick. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's what it is. Is yeah. like, you don't have to actually give a shit about the role, but give a shit about your fans, dick. And so, I never liked him. I never liked Han Solo. Like, because to me, it was just like, Han Solo is a dick for no reason. I love d- dick-like characters. Mm-hmm. I like uh, Zuko from uh, Last Airbender. Uh, uh, freaking Spike from Buffy is my favorite ca- character, period, mm-hmm. in anything. He's basically my spirit animal. <laughs> and, uh, like, legitimately, I'm like, that motherfucker's me. But, um, like, I, I just, I like dick characters, but I hate Han Solo because he's a dick for no reason. There's no, like, they never gave us a pass. They never gave us a reason. It's just like, hey, I'm a dick. How you doing? Yeah, I know you love me. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I see, okay. I see where you're going with that. That actually, I, you know, that, that makes some sense. So this is the first movie I liked Han Solo in. And the reason that this movie is better than A New Hope is because all of the characters are better. The Obi-Wan uh, character is essentially Han Solo. And he's fucking great in this he is so good and you care about him and he's like you know hey kid you want a job and like th- that felt so genuine and yeah. so fatherly and like oh my god dude like and when he hugged leia i'm like oh dude like they give a shit he d- he's not phoning it in fuck yeah Yeah, like you actually and, yeah i yeah I, I get that i i mean I, we can maybe talk about like you know we can debate about that about the mm-hmm. the stuff the reason why i like new hope better is i feel like a new hope is paced better like with each, yeah. Okay, I'll give it. The scene that we transition, like when we transition from scene to scene to scene to scene, mm-hmm. in uh, A New Hope, everything is, gets bigger as it goes, and it feels mm-hmm. like it gets bigger. This film right. uh, sort of suffered from the same thing that Age of Ultron did. There was so much action going on all the time that by the time that we got to that big ending scene that was supposed to feel big or whatnot, mm-hmm. it fell flat. Wait, which scene? The the blowing up the planet. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the end scene. I'm like, that scene was fucking magic. With, but yeah. with uh, Luke? Yeah. Okay. No, no. No, the big action scene at the end where they blew up the planet, I did not care. Like, me either. They just did not pace it well enough for me to care. That There wasn't enough like downtime a little bit to really reflect on what's going on. And there wasn't enough right. small time adventure. Everything in this movie... With the exception of maybe the fights, like on Jakku, mm-hmm. were big. They were big apples, and they were big wars, and we saw this like repercussion that was big. And yes. 
I didn't care, but like I don't know. I like the smaller aspect of A New Hope. Right. I I get. Yeah. That. However, I get. however, the characters mm. uh, better acted in this one, and I do think they were better. Better developed. written too. Yeah. Yeah. Better I, written, better developed. I liked Finn amazingly. I love Finn. I actually do. I, my least favorite character of the three of Ray, Poe, and Finn. Oh really? I think I Poe is my least favorite, but I think it's because of how they handled him towards the end. But that's that's a, I. See, I dislike Finn because of how they handled him in general. He's a stormtrooper. He was, like, legitimately, I guess they grew him from what one of the dudes was saying. Like, oh, from birth, we blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, like, the motherfucker was raised to be a stormtrooper. He was raised to do this. He was raised to do... Why isn't he, like, universal soldier? Why isn't he just, like, unemotional and, like, takes orders and stuff? Why does he have this personality like he's Will Smith in Men in Black, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. he has, like, swagger to him and shit. And, like, fucking Harrison Ford's like, you're ready, kid? And he's like, hell no. <laughs> like, dude, what? Really? Dude, yeah. you were a stormtrooper your whole life. Yeah, I think the thing was is that whenever he saw, like, you know, his fellow stormtrooper buddies get killed and stuff like that i think that like shocked him because like it, it looked like someone who like is going out to war for the first time and going like holy shit like uh, this is what's happening and i think it and up until that point that that makes sense where it shocks him mm-hmm. but it wouldn't change your entire personality and make you this oh, yeah, kind of yeah, cocky smart ass like no dude however you're, you're a stormtrooper i did i i loved him and ray together because oh, yeah. they were they had like this curiousness to them. They were both curious little squirrels out in this new world together. Like she was learning all about like new worlds and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he was learning about like personal relationships. And like I loved how they were like just discovering everything together. And that's what I love so much that's, about it. Cause, like, that's one thing. Oh, go ahead. You, no, you go ahead. I and mean, that's just, I, that was one of the best aspects of this movie for me was just the, like, the discovery. I agree. I, I actually like Finn a lot. I like his character. His, the, his character's mere existence, the way he acts, doesn't make any goddamn sense okay. to me. Yeah, that makes sense. It, but I like him. Yeah. The best thing, in my opinion, was... Um, if you ever watch the Nostalgia Critic, he talks about something called the Liar Revealed storyline. Where somebody lies for the greater good or because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And then it gets revealed. And then the two people, the person they lied to, is mad at him until the end where they finally reconcile. And when I first heard that from the Nostalgia Critic, I was like... Huh, is that really a thing? And now oh, I yeah. can't stop fucking noticing Oh, yeah, it, it's definitely a thing. Yeah, I get and that. And that happened, but they broke the trope. Because instead of Finn, like, hiding it and hiding it and hiding it, Harrison Ford was like, oh, women gonna find out. You better fucking do something, son. So and then he, he did. Fucking, within five minutes, that motherfucker was like, oh, I lied. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, I feel like I they was... broke some tropes in this, which was which yeah. nice. Like, yeah. I loved it. That made me so happy. I was like... Yes, yes, you broke the trope, you fucking did it, I'm so happy you played it properly, good, good on you. All right. So that, that's one thing I love. Yeah, I, I overall it's really good, uh, I, but I have one more bad thing to say, and then we can go into all the good stuff that we like. Right, right. The scene where they meet Harrison Ford, and then they go and they fight the fucking, the alien wrath arts thing or whatever they are. Tentacle, tentacle mouth? <sighs> They could have deleted. They could have removed that scene. They could have basically just had Han Solo walk on the thing, be like, "Chewie, we're home." And then they could have mm. had like all their conversations and all that shit on the mm. fucking Millennium Falcon and been like, "Cool, let's go." And like they could have just left. It just goes to show that Han went back to being his old smuggler way after yeah the, after Luke broke out. And yeah, I get it. I get what they were trying to do. But it, not a fan of it either. It felt so bad. It, like it so felt forced. so inconsistent and with like everything. a sci-fi movie. Yeah, and <laughs> too like, much. Like I mean, like sci-fi channel. Yeah, flat out. Um, yeah, they could have removed that, and they could have put more time on Poe. That's that's my thing. Is, yeah. They could have they, they could remove that ten minute scene and put more time on literally anything else in the movie. They could have explained Anakin's lightsaber. They could have mm-hmm. explained so much more. Yeah, they could have explained what those visions were. They could have expanded on the visions with Ray. They could have explained why Finn acts the way he does. Like just the uh, the little pineapple lady. Like whatever. Like they could have done a lot of stuff. Uh, the last thing that I don't like, and here's where I think it's going to be contentious between us, where you're going to disagree. I don't like... I love Kylo Ren until he takes off his mask. After he took off his mask, I was like, I can't... St- he just seems like somebody that I would... I can't stand. That like you, a, that you a, literally want to punch in the face. Yeah, not because like he's such a good villain, but because he seems like a bratty little rich kid. I agree. That thinks yeah. the law... And, and that's good, though. That's good. 
for who he is, but he was a badass before then. Like I said, he was Darth Maul Vader. He was fuck. He was a mixture of my two favorite villains. Mm -hmm. Like he was awesome. Yeah, and he was so badass and so strong. And then it's like, oh, okay, so he's a he's a pretty boy. All right. <laughs> my issue with him taking off his mask is up until that point, he has his mask on at all times. Of course, mm -hmm. he takes yes. off his mask and then he tries to like fucking force fuck Ray. Mm -hmm. That did not sound good. <laughs> no, he did. He tried to rape her, yeah. essentially. Uh, and then, after that, it cuts to a scene where he's talking to General Snoke, mm -hmm. yes. and he's not wearing his mask again. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, like why wouldn't you have put it back mask. on? Don't pull that shit where you take off your mask, and then the mask and is now just it's off. off for the rest of the yeah. fucking movie. I agree. And, uh, I, I completely agree. I... You know what I think about Kylo Ren? And I think I've heard somebody say this before, but I thought it while I was watching it too, is he is what Anakin should have been in the prequels. Yeah. That's how I feel about him, is he's uh, like a fucking little angry, angsty piece of shit, but he's also badass, and he acts it well. Yeah. Like, th dude, that's, that's how I saw it when I was like, oh, they're doing Darth Vader prequel? That's who I envisioned. Yeah. Well... I don't want to get into it, but like I said, I think I think the third film has some really good elements to it that we see mm -hmm. Anakin, but I do agree. I think, Ky well, you know, we'll, we'll transition into good stuff now. Kylo okay. Ren, my opinion, one of the best villains we've gotten in a while. I I love Darth Vader, but Darth yes. Vader to me, because I've been rewatching this stuff recently, he's sort of one-dimensional until the very end. I agree. He's just badass villain. And that, that, like, like it's like, what's your characteristics? Oh, I'm just a cool guy. Like, mm -hmm. Kylo Ren, I'm okay with him being a little bitch. I'm okay with him right. being able to spoil a little brat. Because at least, in a sense, he's three-dimensional. That's... Wait, okay, if we were comparing them to horror figures, uh, Darth Vader is, uh, like, Leatherface or Jason. He's a very imposing, scary thing. Yeah. That, like, is around every corner, and holy shit. And that's fine. Uh, like, that's fine yeah. if you love that, too. Just, just say it. Darth Maul is uh, kind of... He's also very similar in that sense, but he's more kind of like Pinhead, more like calculating and like... It, it just, you know, aside from the fact he kind of looks like Pinhead. <laughs> he's more calculating and more like skilled and you can tell the wheels are turning in his head as opposed to just being a lumbering thing coming after you. Kylo Ren is an actual character mm -hmm. more so than they are. Yeah, he's, like I, I, felt, I feel like he's real to me. Yeah, like this is a, this is a person... Like, this is somebody that you could actually, might even know mm -hmm. in real life. Like, I completely agree, and I think he's the best villain in the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Yeah, de developed. Developed. Yes. I mean, I would, I don't think I'll ever be able to say, yeah, they're better than Darth Vader. I have a love for Darth Vader. I, but at the same time, he's one-dimensional, in my opinion. He had, mm -hmm. up until, like, the very last Darth Vader scene. Yeah, uh, quite literally, yeah. Yeah, and if you want to count Anakin as Darth Vader, then I guess we have a lot to go through, but I'm not going no, to. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like I, I, I like Kylo Ren. And the thing is, mm -hmm. is that, I mean, we mentioned how Rey, you know, kicks his ass. Yeah. See, I, I mean, even though I took issue with it, like, like, like I was literally sitting in the theater going, like, fucking how? How the fuck yeah. is she? How? Uh at the same time, though, I was like, you know what? It needs to be this way because we need to see him not be great because this is how I think it's going to go. This film, she kicks his ass. Next film, he turns out he's a badass. Like, he just comes back. Because Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, he's just a fucking badass. He, like, mm. he, he does some damage. Maybe even Finn dies. Maybe Poe finally dies. We don't know. Uh, I don't think Finn will die. Yeah. If anybody dies, it'll be Poe. Yeah. Or Leia. Oh, yeah, I think uh, she... I didn't mention this, but she was horrible in this movie. Uh, and then... That's, uh, she hmm. had, like... not It, it probably makes of not enough screen time, and I don't feel like she was actually acting. No, I don't know. It's hard to tell because of the way her voice is. Yeah, it could, like, I was, it's hard to tell. I was distracted by the smoker voice. Yeah. That's a hundred percent what it is. I think. I don't think she's a bad actress. I don't think she was poorly acting. I think her voice can kind of throw you off. I li I liked her, but I didn't love her. Yeah, I Han Solo, at, at least from the original trilogy, uh, from the original cast, stole that. Uh, where was I? 
<laughs> oh no! Uh, this, this next film, Kylo Ren, I think is going to come back and be a badass, and then in the third, he'll lose. But yeah. I, I think they're going to uh, they're going to whenever he comes back and he kicks the fuck out of Ray or whatnot, mm. it's going to be impactful because we see him lose. So yeah, I love Kylo Ren. I, That's yeah, I think he's really good. I think at some point, uh, I like how he was hitting himself, like you know, to like fuel his anger and shit oh, that yeah, was really good yeah. that was genius uh writing and stuff and i like that finn got cleaved and shit and people actually ray didn't get hurt somehow at all yeah at all <laughs> uh i gotta Whatever. say and th- this is my this is my my deal uh even when i when i watched it the fr- film that first i didn't love it mm-hmm. uh however i i i still retain to this the scene at the end where they're fighting in the snow yeah, one of the most like just beautiful, well put together scenes I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, it was gorgeous. I, well, just in every aspect. Yeah, I feel like the only problem that I have with it, and it's a very small problem, I feel like that it took the best two things out of Empire Strikes Back and put them into one: Hoth and the fight with Darth Vader, where you can barely see them, and it's yeah. like their lightsabers are like the only light source. I think that those are the that's what it took. Than, and it's fine. <laughs> I loved it. Other than that, fucking oh my god, I was like just blown away by out watching that. I was like, I want to cry. <laughs> yeah, I was genuinely in love with that scene. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, Chewie got a hit down on uh, on Kylo man when Han died. Uh, Chewie Chewbacca is one of my favorite characters. Uh, mm-hmm. However, watching it recently, I've kind of re- noticed that Chewbacca doesn't actually do much. And no. Uh, the original he's just trilogy. lovable. This one, though, he handled. Yeah, they made they made him a badass. Especially the fact that he got a hidden was like, yeah. when I saw that, I I was so excited. I excited. I was like, oh my god, he fucking Chewbacca gets in a hit. Yeah, I was stoked on that. I was like, and it makes sense too because Kylo Ren was like losing the last of the light in him, and he was like feeling the weight of that and kind of giving himself over to the dark side, so he wouldn't sense things. He would be so deep in those emotions. Mm-hmm. That boom, he gets hit, and that's great. I loved it. The thing that didn't make sense to me is he could sense his father on a planet, but he can't but sense he him s- like right behind him. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was like, dude, what the fuck's like wrong with you? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Just, there's like little, make, uh, there's little nitpicky things that are wrong with this mm-hmm. film. Yes, I agree. And uh, th- that's the thing, though. They're nitpicky. Like, I don't think there's a big problem outside of. Ray knowing the Force way too well, mm-hmm. and uh, like what happens with her and Kylo Ren, like that whole fight, and then uh, the way that they handle Finn. Uh, those are, those are my main major complaints. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I fucking love it, man. I, first time I've ever loved Han Solo. I fucking loved him too, like genuinely. And then um, that end scene with Luke was magical to me. That felt this felt like a Star Wars movie. It felt like home because yeah. when. I was a kid. My brother introduced me to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. He was like 15 years older than me. So he introduced me to Star Wars. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. Like, I always loved it. But then the prequels came and I got jaded. And I I haven't... Li- like, I love uh, Age of Ultron and the Avengers. But they're not as good as my... Like, as Jessica Jones or as Daredevil to me. Or even as I Zombie. Like, I just... I like TV better. Mm-hmm. This is the first movie that made me... This movie made me fall in love with movies again. That's fantastic. That's how I want to that's, you know, that's... If that's what it does for you, that's... That's great, man. Like, I mean, like, that really is. I'm... I, I do think that this is the first movie in a long time to feel like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do have a small appreciation for the prequels. Uh, except for episode two. It's trash. Absolute shit. <laughs> uh... But this is the first film in like 30 years that makes it feel like Star Wars. And it's not necessarily because of the plot or the like the world that we get. But there's just something about it that feels yeah. like the... It could be that we got Harrison Ford back. I mean, that, that could be it. I don't think so. Because even the scenes with just Rey and Finn. Yeah. That felt like Star Wars yeah. to me. At first it was slow. It was slow paced kind of like Star Wars was. Like, mm-hmm. A New Hope is very slow. It's a very slow movie. Yes. And you know what? That's fine because that's how it's paced. I agree. And this movie, it started off very slow and it feels like A New Hope in its own little way. And I, I loved the slowness of it. The pacing of it was fantastic until the end. And, and then it just... I, not Not the ending scene, but the ending fight. But... The first time, yeah, the Death Star bullshit. Yeah. With with uh, Han Solo 
since you said that this, mm. that you've actually enjoyed him in this film, how mm-hmm. how'd you take his death? I knew it was coming. It was spoiled for me, so I was like, eh. Okay. I like I like how they did it. I like that Kylo Ren was basically like, oh fucking dad, help me, blah blah blah. After he talked to, talked to Andy Serkis, with let can we just have can we stop with the mocap shit? Can we just have Andy Serkis play somebody? He's like, gonna he's gonna be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not playing a mocap. So that's. Oh, that's true. I'm yeah, he was already in Edge Ultron. Yeah. yeah, he's playing uh, Ulysses just, Claw. That's correct. Yeah. And that's cool. I mean, yeah, I dig it, but I don't know. I just, I don't really think this fucking new emperor is needed or whatever. I don't know. Uh, that's that's if, nitpicky. If, do, you, do you know about Darth Plagueis at all? Uh, God bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Dar- Dar- <laughs> <laughs> Darth Plagueis is supposed to be the master of uh, Darth Sidious, you know, the emperor. Yes. There are rumors around that this is going to be Darth Plagueis. Oh. And if, okay. if you look at like concept art of Darth Plagueis and stuff like that, they match up. Darth Plagueis has a staff. Daisy Ridley, Rey, has a staff. And she keeps it pretty close. And it was a big issue like with the trailers. Like, look at the staff. Hey, look at the staff. Maybe huh. it's him. I, I mean, okay. honestly, that's the only like logical progression. Otherwise, it's just a fucking dude. And Yeah. I agree. We'll see. We'll see, though. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm feeling it. If that's the case, I'm feeling it. It's just, uh, you know, there. this movie had faults. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't a perfect movie by any uh, stretch of the imagination. Uh, but it was, in my opinion, a perfect Star Wars movie. I feel like uh, comparing it to A New Hope, because that's the only thing you can compare it to, right? Because they're so fucking similar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a new, right? A New Hope did the Death Star thing better. Uh that's all they did better, in my opinion. I feel like Rey is a better version of what Luke was in A New Hope. Better actress, better dialogue, better everything. Just better. Mm-hmm. Finn is Princess Leia. It's a person that's good with the blaster and talks a lot of shit. That's who Finn is. Yeah, that's actually and, a worry that I have, is now that uh, Rey has you know the lightsaber and has like Jedi capabilities and has the Millennium Falcon, mm-hmm. what's, what's going to be Finn's purpose? Uh, to be the damsel in distress, duh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. We'll uh, he's we'll no, see. he's gonna become uh somebody's like sex slave. They're gonna put him in bikini <laughs> with the chain around his neck. I am so excited for that movie. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, <laughs> John Boyega and the bikini. Oh yeah. But and then uh, Poe clearly is Han Solo. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, and I think I like them all better. I like Finn better than Leia. I like uh Poe better than Han. I like Ray better than Luke. I uh. Kylo and Vader are very close. I feel like Kylo's a better better character. Vader was a better threat. Um, yeah, exactly. O- yeah. yeah. The Obi-Wan death versus the Han Solo death, I liked Han Solo's better, and I liked him better as a character. Oh, yeah. I've uh, always felt like the ha- the Obi-Wan death was always a little bit clunky, but yeah, I think that has something to do with the time, and that's okay, but at the same time, yeah. it's still a little bit clunky. Mm-hmm. There's no getting... And the Han Solo death... At first, I didn't like it. I, I felt like it was a little bit too cheesy. Right. Uh, it, I, like, when it happened, I was like, cheese! And then the second mm-hmm. time... I don't know, but the second time you watching this film, I, I liked it so much more. Everything worked for me so much more. Yeah. And, like, whenever he, like, s- like puts his hand on his face or whatnot, and then he just falls... Yeah. I actually felt, like, emotion. <laughs> for, I, was, yeah. I was like, shit. I agree. The first time, I was like, eh, I saw it coming... <laughs> probably because your expectations were too high like that's why I, I think a lot of I are. actually tried to lower my expectations a lot with it oh really yeah because the thing is I was I like to consider myself a realist other people would call me mm-hmm. a pessimist but everyone was like <laughs> this movie is gonna be fucking great and I was like you do know that technically the fans all think that uh you know Star Wars movies are technically 50-50 right like mm-hmm. yeah like 50-50 success rate so this movie could suck and yep no one yeah, no one bought into that and now yeah. people are disappointed and blah 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 so. I, like I don't see how J.J. Uh, Abrams like how c- I don't see how your expectations could be that high personally because Star Trek movies weren't that good yeah J.J. Uh, J. J. Abrams like, I don't know I, I as soon as he got put on as director I was like why yeah and th- yeah I was like oh I was like oh whatever you know I would have liked to have seen someone else do it but whatever it's, it's gonna be whatever I don't give a shit and then 
Like I said, maybe it's because my expectations were so low that I like it so much because I didn't give a fuck. I was like, whatever, I don't care. I haven't liked Star Wars since I was a kid. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not going to do anything new. And they didn't do anything new. Like, legitimately, they made uh, some better characters, but all in all, they didn't really do anything new. It was pretty much a rehash of A New Hope. And I think this holy is a, fuck, did it work for me? Yeah, like, it's a, it's a good starting point for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. However, at the same time, this as a standalone movie, not great. I personally disagree. But I think whenever it gets put into, like, episode 8 and 9, it mm -hmm. will be great. But there are too yes. many questions. There's too many parallels. There's just too many things. The pacing's a little off. I agree with all yeah. that. Yeah. But, I mean, it's good. It is a good movie, but it's I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's great. But it is good. It is by no means bad. And I, I think it will be seen as great when episode 8 comes out. I think, okay, it's a parallel to A New Hope. A New Hope. Mm -hmm. And personally, in my opinion, it's way better than A New Hope. Mm -hmm. That's just my personal opinion. So if that's the case, uh, then they're probably going to parallel The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. I just, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Yeah, at the like, same time. now though, I'm at, at that point. At the same time, though, I'm like, please don't. I want to see, see new stuff. Like, I want to see, the only thing that I want paralleled is that, like, the bad guys are bad Guys win. Like, yeah. that's all I want. I don't want I think that's any more callbacks. I want us to just keep going. I don't forward. mind some I don't mind a couple callbacks like maybe uh you know something like a tauntaun shows up or some shit or like some you know something like I don't mind like that. Like the subtle ones but, like when he pulls out the ball out of the bag. Like ex exactly. Subtle ones. Yes. Not plot I, points. No, not plot points. Yeah, they did that. They did that on purpose, and it makes sense, okay? Like, hey, we're making a new hope for a new generation. We're going to make people forget about the prequels. We're going to wash that dirty-ass Jar Jar out of their mouth. And then we're going to, you know, we're going to set it up so that the old people love it and the new people love it. Like, J.J. Abrams had a hell of a fucking job to do, and I feel like he did the absolute best he could have. Yeah, I, and, I agree. I think that it was the best film that it could be for mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I think that with episode eight, they're going to have to... Uh, they're going to have to go, okay, we need to parallel The Empire Strikes Back in the way that uh, Kylo Ren comes back and he, like, swings his big old dick around and fucks everybody up. Like, that, <laughs> that they're going to have to do that, right? But uh, they can't parallel it d as closely as they did with The New Hope. Yeah. They're going to have to get away from that now. Okay, JJ, get some of your original ideas out there, buddy. Let's see what we can do here. I believe uh, the next guy who's directing it, which I don't think is a great choice, but we'll see. I believe it's the guy who directed Godzilla, the new one. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, however, JJ is going to be producer, so okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I think that. I mean, if you had to, do you want to put a rating on it, or do you not care to do that? Um. Ever since my anime reviews and stuff, I really don't put ratings on things because I feel like people will be like, "Oh, well, you gave this and this." Oh yeah. But yeah. Uh, in terms of general movies, for me, it. Like I said, it fucking it made me love movies again. It's a 9 out of 10. Okay. It's not perfect, but fuck if it's not close. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it 8. 8 out of 10. Mm -hmm. So That's fair. All right, then. I think this uh, wraps up the very first episode of Medium Damage. Uh, where can people follow, uh, find you, follow you, and whatnot on social media? Uh, find me at youtube.com forward slash Shintel Genesis or youtube.com Shinjen Gaming or on the Twitters at Shintel Genesis. All right, then. You could find me at, uh, well here uh youtube.com free zacks youtube.com the real game theater spelt the douchey way uh <laughs> with re you can find me at twitter at free zacks was taken so cool cool <laughs> i think this wraps it up everyone thanks for watching if you're still here uh is there any last thoughts before we head off um not real i mean uh no <laughs> <laughs> all right on the next podcast we will talk the marvel universe uh probably with a big emphasis on jessica jones daredevil and i want to talk about the tv stuff and maybe uh you know small reviews of each movie or something sounds good cool cool see you guys later bye now where was i Oh yeah, Joanna's job is to break into Datadyne and find Dr. Carroll, a scientist who has defected from Datadyne because he knows all their dirty secrets. Also, he's a laptop. Why? Reasons? Just accept it, it gets easier! With his father, who managed to escape to the surface. Kamina, planning to follow in his father's footsteps, invites Simone into his group. 
Team Gurren. With the help of the rest of Team Gurren, whose names could literally not matter any less, Simone and Kamina hatch a plan to use a whip made of pig moles to ride their way to victory. That doesn't make sense. 